welcome back to Ill Eagle Culture Brand Talks. I am your host, John Ostos, a.k.a. Ill Eagle CEO, and I'm with my counterpart, as usual, Dion One Bottle Larry. <laughs> You're not holding true to the name, Dion. All my cups are dirty. That's all I'm saying. Okay. That, that makes sense because you always carry two cups. Exactly. So I imagine you go through dishes a lot faster. Yeah, yeah. The dishwasher takes like four hours. So, so. Um, this isn't going to be too crazy of a, of a detailed episode between me and Dion. Um, what we've actually done here is, is we've done two uh, interviews um, and we'll try to summarize this to make a long story short because this is going to be a pretty long uh, episode as it is. I think we got just about two hours worth, if not more. Mm-hmm. Um, so to kind of catch everybody up of what's going on, um, there was some drama in the USPA. Um, started with Goob. Uh, U2 is it what he goes by Goob dot U2 Goob dot U2 yeah so anyways this guy's notorious on Instagram for calling out people for photoshopping and and influencers and things like that Um, that's kind of how he made his name but then from there he just kind of became Superman of influencers BSing lying getting into trouble um, people faking whatever it may be he's become like the epitome of he's doing a great job yeah yeah he's calling everyone out on it um there's a lot of people locally he could call out, I'm sure, too. Yeah. Uh, that's a whole nother episode, though. Uh, but but long story short, so some stuff went down with the USPA with a girl who kind of got crazy. And I think we detailed this in some of the interviews as well. Um, but what it did is, is it divided a lot of people in the USPA. And we have USPA North Dakota here, which is ran by Dave Stenslin. And um, feel free to jump in and, and help me summarize on, on points that I missed. But I just want to get straight to it so that we can make sense of these interviews. Um, there was a big falling out between... Uh, Stage four athletics, which is a really big sponsor, um, not just in in USPA, but in a lot of local events and stuff, because they're they're local to North Dakota. Um, They had kind of a not even kind of they had a pretty bad uh, disagreement in terms of the direction the USPA was going and things that were and weren't being released publicly in terms of people that have some of the same issues. The issue being that there was a lot of um, assault and sexual allegations amongst judges and people in the USPA that weren't being addressed. They were being called out by Goob and they were trying to cover their tracks real quick and it got ugly for them. The USPA. <clears throat> the USPA. Yeah. Dave Stanslin um, was the chairman for USPA North Dakota. And uh, he was trying to get information out as quick as he possibly could from what it looked like. Uh, he was um, doing what he was supposed to be doing in yeah. terms of what the USPA rules and regulations were at the time. Um, he was being called out uh, by stage four athletics um, about some local athletes and some things that were going on here locally and what he was doing to make good on, you know, owning what the USPA was dropping the ball on. Long story short, Dave has now since left the USPA um, after he finishes this King of the North, I yep. believe is then he's done and he's going XPC stage four athletics were uninvited to all USPA events. Um, in which they said they no longer <clears throat> wanted to participate in USPA events as well. Dave Stenlin's, well, yeah, yeah Dave Stenslin events or yeah. whatever. Um, and and we're just trying to be super impartial to the situation here. Um, we we don't we didn't pick a side on any of this. We just kind of noticed that it was dividing the local lifting community in general um, between power lifters and people who followed the power lifting. Um, circuits and whatnot mm-hmm. and and so we were just like yo let's see if we can get these people on the show uh let's have a quick interview let's get some information from the horse's mouth let's talk to to joe and tristan um who are stage four athletics to talk to them directly um ask them some questions and kind of just let them speak and then we'll do the same with dave and then the hopes is that we can get a third episode done yeah i'm not sure how that's going to go if we're going to but what i do like about what little bit we were able to get from them on on some pretty short interviews considering the the magnitude of the, the issue at hand yeah um, was just their version of the story and how they truly felt about the situation and about the other person. And so I think what you guys are going to find at least is that you can hear from the horse's mouth directly um, each person's um, understanding of the situation. Yeah. And and then you can discern for yourself um, who's right, who's wrong. Or um, I think we're, we've kind of concluded is we're just kind of on the middle, in the middle ground here. We're like, look, 
I, I truly believe, and I told them this, I, I believe that there's a lot of ego involved here. This is a, a an ego sport, whether you want to admit it or not. Yeah. Um, these guys are both genuinely passionate about this sport and about the athletes, um, about the circuits, that, you know, for, yeah. for... And growing it in this yes. area in North Dakota. Both, so. now, now, keep in mind, both are extraordinarily passionate. And when you get passion involved and, and some frustration involved... People start doing and saying things that they probably don't necessarily mean yeah. or wouldn't normally say. From my understanding, these two were cool before. They've competed in powerlifting um, as comrades from North Dakota in the past. Uh, so the hopes is we can put out a fire. Um, worst case scenario, we don't get to put out a fire, but at least we've got these interviews where everyone can kind of watch for themselves and discern what's going on yeah. here. So I think that kind of prefaces what we're getting into. And then as we get into these interviews, we'll we'll give a little um, prelude and, and, and kind of background as to what's going on for each person here and where it all how it all started. So you can hear everyone's version of the story. So why waste any time? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, feel free to add any questions that may or may not get answered uh, down in the comment section below this video, obviously. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and we can reach out and try and get those an answers for you. So I agree. So without further ado, we'll uh, put you guys into the first interview, which is going to be um, with Joe and Tristan of S4 Athletics. So we'll show you guys this one, which was pre-recorded. We did this over a Zoom with them because uh, they're not local to Fargo, North Dakota. Um, and then we'll come back, have a brief discussion, and then we'll shoot it off to Dave and we'll end it on that. Uh, so without further ado, like I said, here is the interview we did with S4 Athletics, Joe and Tristan. Right on, man. Uh, well, I'm Joe. Um I've been in strength sports since I was 14. I uh, competed Olympic lifting, strongman, a little bit of CrossFit. Um, and I power, we don't talk about that. I did a little bit of power lifting, but um, primarily, and then once, you know, I got to my mid thirties, I kind of like, I'm, I'm on my way out. Um, and I started coaching and I've been coaching in North Dakota since 2016. Um, back when USPA was, uh, there might have been 20 of us in a garage type it was tiny there was there was none of there was that's back when like a 600 pound deadlift was heavy okay. you know like it's mm -hmm. been there's kids these days that are pulling 750 at our meets and it's just the sports evolved so much since i've been here that it's it's beautiful it's beautiful for me and i love the community and i love watching it grow into what it is and to what it was i guess and just yeah so that's my background we own stage four athletics that's Stage four athletics is, um, it's a brand, but it's really a message. It's a survivor's brand and it, it's a brand for anybody who looks their adversity in the face and says, not today, I'm going to go forward. I'm going to overcome this and I'm going to take it a day at a time. And I'm going to do what I need to do to build a better future and build a better me. And, uh, it was really built after, I mean, I've dreamt of designing for a long time since I was a little girl, but really stage four athletics came from. Uh, my journey beating stage four cancer and turning a life sentence into a message instead. And so that's where our roots really lie. And that's where we choose to stand with our business, mm -hmm. with our message. And we've sponsored every single meet that we, I mean, for the past, what, three years or so? Two years. Two years. We, we've sponsored every meet. I, we've brought athletes to every meet, 10 plus, eight plus athletes, to every single wow. meet, you know, I mean, we've been a heavy part of the community for a very long time. Yeah. I mean, I gave a speech at the last meet. Yeah. I mean, we, I mean, we gave up a thousand bucks to each of the overall winners. There's four of them. They're not doing that at local meets. There's no other state doing that at a local meet. Yeah, that's incredible. You know, it, it's, that's a, but that's just what we want for the community. We wanted to, I mean, we had it set aside for it and then we deployed it because, Hey, let's make this fun. You know, it's let's, a hard sport. You're making deposits every day on your body, on your mental health, on everything you're doing, aiming for these, the 60 seconds. And it's a, so much work to get there. And these are people from every kind of background, people who come from well-to-do homes, people who come from broken homes. You don't know who's stepping on that platform or why they're stepping on that platform, but they all have a reason to be there. Everybody had the same journey through prep. You know, everybody, like she said, made deposits every single day, day in and day out dead deposit 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 and to see people make that withdrawal on the platform just when you see you know a, a 19 year old girl smash a national record and the her face the joy that she has it, god that feeds my soul in a way i can't even describe man like 
there's nothing like watching my athletes or really anybody, but particularly my athletes because I have a relationship with them, watching them crush something that they didn't think they could, that they were hesitant about or they were nervous about or they didn't believe in themselves that they could do and watch them go do it and come off that platform with this type of energy you only see. You only see it when someone does something that just they didn't believe that they could until they do it. And it's right. just powerlifting has just been therapeutic for me, really. I mean, just, just coaching these athletes has just been really therapeutic to my, you know, into my history. You know, it, it's helped me overcome a lot because I made a lot, a lot of lifetime friends, genuinely good hearted, kind people. I've, I'll be friends with the rest of my life. You know, some of my athletes I'll be friends with the rest of my life. Lisa, I started coaching her when she was 15, you know, I, and that we coached her into a world record, Wow. you know, and you know, it, her little face is there. Anyway, I'm not going to start talking about Lisa. <laughs> yeah. No, talk that's awesome, man. I can I can tell how much you guys genuinely appreciate what you do and and uh, the kind of heart and passion that you have for it. It, it's, uh, it definitely shows just in the way you talk about it. Your face lights up, bro. So yeah, man. commend you for like, that. That's awesome, really. Uh, so let's let's kind of dive in a little bit here. Um, also uh, to you, Trish, and I think it's incredible the story behind S4. So thanks for sharing that. And, and I know we can <laughs> really divulge into that a lot more. Um, I understand that's not what this phone call is for. Uh, particularly today, um, but I would love to revisit this at, at a later time and really get a cool backstory on S4 and, and see how we can maybe put a little bit more of a platform behind that on the podcast someday. I'd love to have you guys live too next time because this is this is kind of weird, but we're going to make it work. Yeah. So I apologize for all the technical difficulties in the beginning. Oh, no this. worries. I thought it was us. <clears throat> nah, I don't, I don't know honestly who it was, but uh, collectively it was us, right? <laughs> so, so let's, let's get into this. And there goes Dion. <laughs> Yeah. So, can you hear us? I can. Uh, I've been here this for a minute now. So, I, yeah, it was nice hearing about you guys. Obviously, um, you may not know me. Uh, I'm Dion. Uh, I work at h and i part of Illegal Culture Brand. So, uh, and just an avid gym goer, obviously. Um, I, I know at least like the the last event that I was at and we were sponsoring, obviously, as well. Uh, I saw your all the all the spotters had your guys' shirts on and stuff, and they were happy to have some gear that they were able to take home. I know uh, spotters don't usually get really anything other than maybe a meal. So, yeah, I mean, you guys That's definitely- important, are, man. They're, I mean, yeah. We can't do it without them. We can't. Exactly, you know. yeah. Awesome. So so let's, let's take a step forward here because one of the main reasons why we uh, got you guys on the podcast today is we wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on currently um, in the powerlifting community, uh, primarily with the USPA. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy as of lately. I think most people at this point, um, if you didn't know Goob, uh, you know him now. He, he's really yeah. famous on, on social media for um, calling out photoshoppers in the fitness industry, fitness influencers and, and bodybuilders yeah. and whatnot. And he's exposed quite a bit um, of people and he's always ran it with facts. Um, he's also seems to have a, a personal grudge with um, sexual predators and harassment and things of that nature throughout the industry, both in the IFBB as well as in the USPA. He's brought in attention to a lot of that. As of late, he's kind of exposed something with the USPA. Um, and, and feel free to correct me as I, I can, if I get off track a little bit with what exactly went down. But I understand the beginning of it started with a girl um, who was one of like the, the judges for the Federation. Um, got into a beef with somebody who was a neighbor of hers. They got her on camera doing some pretty disgusting stuff. Goob dug into it and found out that there's a little more to the story um, to her and, and as well as just a lot of people in the region where she was from. Um, it looked like some sexual assault stuff, abuse, things of that nature started getting exposed. And the biggest thing about the issue that he had with it is that the USPA was supposed to be having the competitors back. They're supposed to be taking care of their well-being and making sure that they're around people who are safe to be around and uh, that they weren't endangered in any way. They said that they were um, requiring background checks and things of that nature. And to make a long story short, it turns out they hadn't been doing that at all whatsoever, mm -hmm. um, which then now brings us to this point where I believe uh, Joel Sullivan, that is that his name? He, he yes. kind of wanted to be a voice uh, for the, the powerlifting community with the USPA. He wanted to hold them accountable um, he started to speak out on that a little bit. And then I think this is kind of where I, I lose real good sight on the story because it kind of goes all over the place. And then a bunch of people jump in on social media here and I start to see conversations 
every which way all over my feed that I really couldn't keep up with, um, which is kind of why we're doing this here. We're going to create some clarity and, and make sure people understand all sides uh, free and clear as far as what your point of views were and why you had the, the feelings and emotions you do about the situation. Uh, but to, to kind of lead off for you, Joe Sullivan is, is a friend of yours. You yes. guys are cool with him, right? And, and so mm -hmm. you kind of took this back a little bit. Um, now go we ahead. Were neutral. Oh, you were neutral. Okay, yeah. In regards to North Dakota, we were neutral up to a point. Okay. So, so where did it where did it go left then with Dave, who who's, who was the chairman for for the North Dakota USPA? How did you guys, um, I guess, have this falling out and, and get in, into the position we're in right now? Ultimately, uh, how many details do you want? As much right, as possible. Talk, you know? Yeah. yeah. Right. So him and Joe have a grudge. They have, they have they have beef. Uh, at a meet that we had here a while back, there were some issues with the spotters, and and these are kids, man. They don't. I mean, these are high school kids. They don't know how to spot a guy squatting 800 pounds, you know, like it, and that sucks. But I mean, you can't, I mean, you, you kind of hold the the host at fault, but at the same, the judges at fault for putting these kids back there. But at the same time, they're kids, you know, they don't, I mean, it's not okay, but I get it. You know what I mean? And then, uh, I don't know, they, they have some beef with, with uh, Marshall, another coach here in town. And it, that blew up and out of that completely got blown way out of proportion. And in regards to it should not have been the way it was, but it was, it ended up being the way it was. And um, Joe wasn't happy about it. And Joe was verbal about it. Dave didn't like that. Dave told him to quiet down. He quieted down. And then from there, that would, that was really the end of it. And then all this goo got all this other stuff going. And then so Joe brought it up that, hey, why was nothing done over here? You know, North Dakota, when I've made it a complaint about X, Y, Z. And um, so that, you know, USPA, North Dakota is going to take that personally because it's it's a jab at them. Um, but I mean, understandable. I mean, if, if nothing was done about his complaint or if he wasn't, I don't know if he was replied to or if he had contact with anybody about it. I don't, I don't know anything about that. But, um, sorry. But, uh, oh, we can't. Sorry. I thought y'all could hear my, Never mind. No, oh, you're uh, <laughs> And so anyway, fast forward. So they have beef and I'm, I'm pretty good friends with Joe. And I, I was, I, I thought I was pretty good friends with, with Dave as well. Um, I mean, cause we, you know, we, well, we sponsor every meet, you know, and I, I was, I mean, I talked to Dave, you know, on the phone, like he, Joe posted something, tagged Dave, Dave took it personal. They felt it appropriate to, to use the USPA Instagram as a platform to, you know, loosely retaliate, retaliate, retaliate that one for me <laughs> um, in regards to what uh, he used his platform to do that. And uh, that wasn't Joe didn't want it wasn't it, it wasn't a stab at, at Dave, but Dave took it personal, personal to the point that, you know, he felt the need to voice his opinion and be a little snarky, a little unnecessary. I mean, particularly if you're going to use your platform in the USPA to voice your opinion, you know, he was, he was a little snarky about it, but I mean, whatever, you know, it's social media is 2023. You get over yeah. it. Tensions you know? are high at this point too, right? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. extremely high. Yeah. And um, so <laughs> Joe calls me like right after that. And I'm just, I try to smooth the waters. I try to calm things down. And then I talk to Dave about like hey you know this is this is what the community wants man like the, like joe is makes a relevant point you know like they the community wants transparency the victims the victim want transparency yes they want transparency and prior to that post that uh dave had made uh one of the referees had stepped down voluntarily stepped down which was the right call because it's pending allegations for yada yada he's got to go to he still has they're still in the legal process there's no convictions there's no evidence it's just i'm not gonna get into all that but it was the right call considering the climate within the uspa and how everything is going it, it would make sense for a guy like hey i got this shit i got this stuff going on sorry i have this stuff going on i'm gonna step down walk away from it for a moment just to kind of you know keep the waters calm and uh Man, I lost my train of thought. And another member was also uh, banned at the same time because there was oh. uh, evidence of uh, physical abuse, domestic problems, um, 
beat a woman's face up. Photos, evidence, you are So out. Dave put it out that, you know, a lifter has been banned and a referee had stepped down. You don't need to expose the lifter. You know, that's that's a little different. But with your, your, your referee, your judge who represents the USPA, there's no sports organization in the United States is not going to tell you who and why. And that's just how it is. Like people are going to want to know who it was and why all Dave had to do. And why he remained on the Federation for an extended period of time after the allegations were made public. Yes. And so like that that's someone local then too. Yes. Yes. Is that local to North Dakota at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's, what the federal i mean that's that's what the fed the national the, the, i guess the tippy top steve dennison the president the owner and then all the guys at the top that was what everyone is having problems with with large issue was that they weren't being transparent they're trying to sneak everybody out try to keep everything hush hush and that's at this point you can't do that you you need to be transparent with the community you need to tell everybody why you don't have to tell them the details you just said hey this referee is out and until his court hearing is complete, he will stay away from the USPA and he won't judge another meet just to keep things civil. I told Dave that. I mean, because I, I mean, I know all the community. Like, they, that's this is what they want. They just transparency, you know, because what happens in March when he, because he's not banned and he, he shouldn't be banned because there's, there's no proof, there's no evidence, there's no conviction, there's nothing. You know, they're like, but if he shows up to coach his athletes in March and people think that he's supposed to be out, it's going to create a whole another. we're going to reignite the same fire, you know, but we're going to do it on meet day when everybody's lifting, it's going to be a problem because if the coach is getting hounded by people, he's not going to be able to give his athletes what they deserve. So now it hurts, not just the coach, but it hurts the athletes who prepped for the last 12 weeks, you know, so just to clear things up and keep things, I mean, they're tense, but just to keep things more, you know, centered, be, be public, be, you know, be transparent with it. And Dave's words were the people who need to know, know. And it's like, I mean, that, I can't agree with that, man. Like that's not, that's not helpful because that's the same kind of attitude that the national office has, which is why they're taking so much heat. So unless you want the community to start coming down on us, well, not us, but the community to start coming down on USP in North Dakota, be transparent, man. It's not that big of a deal, you know, because it's, you're not exposing that guy's personal, personal life. There's no details. Um, he didn't like that. So um, we got off the phone. I told Tristan what was going on. And she and I talked about it. We sat on it for probably you know, two or three hours. And uh, we pulled our sponsorship from the USPA. Like, we're just not going to sponsor this anymore. We're not, we can't get behind this. We support the community. We can't support individuals. You know, we, 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 we just, this is not who we are. That's not what we're about. Um, and it wasn't even 60 seconds later, he called me, D D Dave called me and he said, uh, <laughs> you killed, you killed powerlifting. Congratulations. I was like, what the fuck? Is, what are you, what are you talking about? Like your post I was like, I didn't make me post your wife. I was like, and then it clicks. Oh shit. So I guess she was on it. Cause I thought it was going to be a little, I thought she's going to have to take her time to write it and make sure. No, she was ready to go. <laughs> she I was, stand with the victims. You know, she was, she pulled the trigger and then I was like, well, it is what it is, man. And he hung up. About 10 minutes later, he banned stage four from all the events. He banned the coaches from it. And, and that's not about, dude, you can't just go banning coaches because you got your feelings hurt. You know, like you don't ban, you're not banning Iron Rebel or Pioneer or any of these bigger brands from your shows. Why are you banning us? You know, why, why are you singling? Because we do more for the powerlifting community around here than anybody. And there's not a single company that does for the powerlifting community what we do. I mean, and, and my team shows up, we show up eight, 10 people deep, you know, and with those people come spectators, which is revenue for the hosts. Like we support the community and he, and he banned us, but that doesn't just affect us. What about my nine athletes competing yeah. that day? You know, of those three days, you know what I mean? Like now half of them have dropped out because why do they want to go if their coach can't be there? You know, cause that's, that's part of the experience. You don't pay your coach you know, for six months and then not them not be there. We go, we, we meal prep for them. We fly all over the country to support our athletes on our dime. They don't pay for, sh they don't pay for that. We do that. 
We get a big Airbnb. Stage four gets a big ass Airbnb. Everybody comes to the team house. They stay there for free. We feed them for free. We cook for them. We meal prep for them. Well, she does. You know, it's we take care of our athletes because they're family to us. You know, like like I said, like every athlete I have, I've probably had for at least a year now. Majority of them over 12 months, some of them for three or four or five years. They're family. So, you know, we take care of them because we can and we were we are blessed in a way where we can afford to. So we do. And it sucks because there's nothing I can do about this. There's nothing she, neither one of us can do about this. If the state director decides that he wants to ban you because he got his feelings hurt, it doesn't matter. You're banned. It is what it is. There's nothing I can do about it. And um, there's just, I can't find any way, I can't justify myself in any way how that was even remotely appropriate. You know, and it just, it just, it sucks. It, it really sucks because we, and now let me let me ask this, man. Is this a is we want to be there? That, is this something that came down um, from the USPA to Dave that you're aware of, or is this just a no, decision no. That you this understand? Is he made it's on his own? This is a hundred percent Dave because I mean Dave has even posted that he's not going to support a company that does not support him, and that's when I lost my cool. Like I was super cool about. I did my best to stay as unaggressive, I guess, as I could. Uh, on, on as, top, PC. As, as PC as I could, you know, because I was very, very clear as day telling all my athletes, stay the course. It's going to be fine. Just send me videos and we can go from there. You can ask any of them. I can, I mean, I have receipts for all this. And then I even told, I was like, I would post to my story pretty religiously for several days. Like, don't let everything that's going on bleed us out. Like no, North Dakota powerlifting is not dead. Let's just stay the course, let the calm, let the seas calm down and just let all the fog clear just we'll get through this like everyone just make sure you're you know just stay the course and um nobody wants to man no, nobody wants to because as soon as he said i'm not going to support a company that does not support me that's when i blew up that's when i was like all right man i'm, I'm taking the gloves off and i i got a little more aggressive in a post than i probably should have um I don't regret what I said. I regret how I said it. I didn't have to be as vulgar as I was, but I, 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 mean, I get it, brother. <laughs> I couldn't, I, I don't get it. You know, you're supposed to represent the community. You're supposed to be leading the community here in North Dakota. We had a beautiful thing. We weren't like all the other states that are going through everything. We had a beautiful thing. We were a collected community. Like there was no real tension in the warm up areas. There's never been, everyone's loading for each other. Everybody's hype for each other. That's just, I mean, there's friendly banter, but there's no real, like, genuine rivalry between anybody, in my opinion, from what I've seen. And that's just, that's beautiful to me, you know, because it just. Like we have family, it's a family event when we have meets in North Dakota. We have freaking bouncy houses. Yeah. <laughs> you know what like, I mean? Kids yeah. come to these events. Kids yeah. get hyped and are yelling. We watch the vulgarity at our meets here. We watch the safety. We have people at the doors. Like, these are well-ran events. So it was. Mm -hmm. It was not what I, the reaction that I anticipated. I anticipated a step back while the waters cleared and everybody came to balance and that we would be able to come back in stronger than ever and continue to showcase that North Dakota has what it takes to continue the path that they were on if this positive route, like clear the water is two small incidents that you've got to get out of the way here. But then a decision was made and then a, a rash decision followed that. And then controversy within our own state has gotten to the point that it's at now. And now it's to the point that athletes are bleeding and that's not fair. Mm -mm. That's not fair. They're weeks mm -mm. out. Yeah. They're, 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 they're what, seven weeks out this week, you know, and, and, and at the same time for Dave to just pull the trigger on something that drastic, that dramatic, and then just commit to leaving the Federation entirely you're you're trash man plain and simple that's that's trash i don't give a shit that's trash that's not leadership you acted impulsively you got your feelings hurt so you kicked out people that love the community people that provide for the community and in doing so you're separate you're dividing the community right. but i mean but beyond that i mean beyond that the, the guy went through the north dakota instagram and started removing my athletes from following him like that's some petty ass shit, man. That's our state. Page. That's 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 our state page. 
that that's a platform that's created for the community. Why are my athletes being made to feel like they're not going to be welcome at your meets now because they're associated with me? I didn't do anything. You know, I, I stood yeah, with the people as you just, you know what I mean? Like I didn't do shit. All I did was pull a sponsorship from somebody who didn't appreciate it. Sorry, sorry, cursing. No, you're good, um, man. You know, I, it. and it's just, I just don't get it. You know, yeah, I, I don't get how you can make such an emotionally impulsive decision and then go and remove athletes that are going to be competing there. And how does that make them feel? How is that beneficial for the community? How is that positive in any way? This is a very negative state that the USPA is in. And all he did was throw gasoline on, on the fire. That was it. And now he's leaving the USPA. So that in itself, you started all this stuff. And you can't clean it up. And you, you can't clean it up. So your solution is just to walk away from it and just leave everybody behind. It's trash, man. That's trash. Like right. you're not leaving the USPA because you disagree with what they've done or because you're standing up for the people that you were supposed to represent as state chair. You're not leaving for that reason. You're leaving because you made a dumpster fire and it left the dumpster and you can't contain it anymore. That's perfect. Like you're, you, that's not leadership. That's not somebody to stand up. These athletes, these aren't just typical athletes. I'm not gonna downplay any sport to compare it, but this is hard. And people who commit to this sport, they become very loyal. They're very loyal to their trainers. They're very loyal to their federations. They're very loyal to the people who support them throughout their journey. And so, I mean, to, 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 to do what he did and then to take it a step further and just say, <clears throat> bye guys, come with me, follow me if you want. But like, that's what, what, well, hit, like that yeah, was selfish. Know. That was selfish. Yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't have the understanding or, or enough intel from Dave directly to, to know that he was removing athletes and things like that from following the page too. Oh, I got receipts. When we, oh, yeah, when yeah, we, I, I believe you. I, I don't think there's any reason to lie about that either. Um, when that post I, was made that stage four was banned, man. the air in this house got so heavy. Uh, we didn't uh, talk. We didn't know what to say. There's not, we couldn't do anything. If we, we're not going to fight, like you can't do it. And so we looked at each other and we're like, what do we do for our athletes? what is our next step how do we make this okay because it hurt it hurts it like like a bad freaking breakup you invest so much into something and then all of a sudden it's gone and you've got nothing to show so i was wondering do you guys have any uh competitors obviously you say there was some seven weeks out or whatever the, sh the competition is uh or when it is do you have any competing in that competition still or there's a few still all... yeah they there, there's a few that are staying yes um how but about half of them pulled out how do you expect to navigate that situation then i have with one of we have a amputee athlete that competes um and he has it set up we we're very close tight like he's very upset by the whole situation um but his coach okay. is also one of our coaches and his nutritionist uh okay. and his like cheerleader uh but we can't go now and so we have his daughter is going to be doing live video for us so that we can help back and forth his feedback and then i have some other friends there who are also coaches that hey anything i can do is like man help my dudes help my people load their bars dude i mean the, that's what i'm talking we're about the community the like everybody can. is coming together and dealing with we're doing the best we can Right. You know, and, and I've had three coaches reach out to me and say, is there any, anything I can do? It's like, just help my lifters. I mean, because that's, that's honestly, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's, everything's for them. It's for them. Yeah. And like if we weren't yeah. upset because we were banned. I mean, we're upset because we can't be there for them. Right. If we couldn't wear stage four, that's fine. fine, fine, whatever. But we can't be there for them. That's a problem. So now uh, with Dave moving to XPC, um, changing federations, who's running the show then? Because I think King of the North. I, I believe he's still directing it. Okay. He's going to stick out. He's going to stick out. to do that then, huh? Oh, I don't think it's, it hasn't got elevated in a way where I think the, the Steve and those guys at the top have a lot bigger fires to put out first sure, than yeah. deal with, you know, like, a, you know, a coach and a, a director getting into it. You know, and and I understandably so, considering, you know, Steve's put 40 years into building this federation and it's just crumbling apart, you know, like that's his 
that's a legacy. But Steve's trash too, just so I'm clear. Yeah. That's my opinion on Steve. Steve's garbage. Yeah. See, I understand um, after just a very brief discussion with Dave, because I am, as I told you, I'm going to have him come on to and give his version of the story and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the night we were supposed to meet up, he, he ended up canceling because he said he was switching federations as we were speaking and wasn't going to make it to our appointment. So we're rescheduling that. But um, from what I understand, he, he tells me that the reason why he's jumping ship at this point from the USPA was because of the president, was because, you know, there was the the uh, initial apology letter. Then what, there was the the threat of cease and desist to Goob and anybody else, the slander and the attorneys were going to get all over it. And then retracted, came back and just said, actually, no, we were in the wrong and apologized again. And at that point, oh, yeah. it, that was where it was. That was enough for oh. him. To, he just said, I'm out. I can't do this anymore. I'm, I I'm sure up. that played a role. It's a shit I show, mean, yeah. Prior to all this, Dave and I were talking about all of it, and, and he was, let's just stay the course, man, and see what happens. You know, like, it, it, he was he was on the fence about leaving already. But you leave, and you take the community somewhere else. Like, nobody's going to go to the XPC. Right. You know what I mean? Like, everybody's WRPF now. South Dakota is. Montana is. Wyoming's about to be. Minnesota. I mean, it's everywhere. that California, they're doing it, too. WRPF is taking the they're picking up the ball everywhere so why wouldn't you just take the state chair with the WRPF transition out of the USPA you know I, I don't and, and I think that largely has to do with the fact that it, he, it was apparent to everybody he doesn't care about the athletes he doesn't like the dude would use the dude <laughs> He ridiculed a master's athlete because the guy boasts about himself a lot. You know, he's like, you know, I'm the best 220 in, in North Dakota, masters, and yada, yada. Not doing it arrogantly. He's just hyping himself up. If we knew the dude, he's, he's not arrogant about it. He's, not, right. he's a good dude. But, I mean, he, he traded one addiction for another, if, if that makes sense. Okay. You know, and so I don't know if you know anything about addiction, but when you commit to something, you're addicted to something, it's everything. Yeah. And if you look at this guy's Instagram, it's all powerlifting. Every, every single post. thing is powerless. And the guy does every meet. Every. He's at every meet. He does push pull, deadlift only, bench press only, full power. You can't get any more money out of him. He signs up for everything. So to sit for him to publicly ridicule this guy because the way he's, you know, projecting himself using the USPA North Dakota platform from their Instagram is in itself garbage. I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here and imply that I didn't think it was a little like bothersome. It was annoying to me to me at first until I learned the guy's story, and then my gear shifted a little bit, a lot of it actually, completely, to be honest. And now I promote the shit out of the guy. Like I, I throw him all over every time he posts something. He doesn't even tag me. I'll go grab it and throw it in my story sure. because he deserves that. I mean, and then beyond that, he doesn't just show up to all the meets. This last meet, he brought four people with him. He brought four more people to the community. And that's what the community is. It's, it's growth. It's, it's happy. It's positive. It's support each other, you know, and I just don't think that that was appropriate. And that pissed a lot of people off too. I stayed out of that one because didn't. she didn't, she got, yeah, <laughs> I stayed out of that one because I just, I mean, that's not my lane. For the athletes by the athletes is pretty clear to me, you know? And then, like I said, once, once he, he verbalized, I'm not going to support a company that doesn't support me. Buddy, we don't support you. We don't support Dave Stinslet. We support the community, you know, and he doesn't, I don't know, man, I don't know what to say beyond that. He doesn't give a shit about the lifters. He doesn't care. I don't care what any of his refs say either. I, I don't care because for them to sit there and imply, if any of them do, I don't know if they do or don't, <clears throat> but if, if any of them are going to sit there and imply that Dave grew the community, first off, a director doesn't grow shit. The director situates and directs the meet the community grows itself the athletes and the coaches grow the community that's how a community grows it grows organically it's not having to throw some pyrotechnics and get you know nick to do a video so now i grew the community from 20 to 120 that's not how that works that's not how that works at all so like, i don't i can't i just don't i don't understand some of the people's perspectives on, on how i understand that they're supportive of dave because they might be friends on a personal level but I don't understand how somebody in their soul can sit there and support and, and continue to boast about somebody who is blatantly 
disrespecting and just completely dumping on the community. You know, that in itself, you're trash too. You and him, y'all, y'all are both trash or any of them. I don't know how many there are, if there are any, but from what I'm told, I don't verify this stuff. Cause I don't care enough. I don't need to feed my soul with that shit. But I mean, that's what people say. And additionally, he's telling people. So I've been told that I'm pulling my athletes. You can ask every single one of my athletes, ask all of them. And I would, t- I told every single one of them, think long and hard. I support you either way, but think long and hard about this. Sleep on it. And if you're not sure, sleep on it again. It doesn't matter to me. I'll be there either way. I'm going to support you. If you go to this one, I'm going to do what I can to support you. If you want to go to that one, I'll drive you. You know, like we're going to Vegas now. We're taking a lot of athletes to Vegas and we just, we're, we just we got a giant ass Airbnb with a pool and we're just going to try to make it fun. You know, it, we have what, six rooms? Like it's a, it's, it's going to be fun. But if that's what we have to do to keep the team camaraderie and intact and, and keep the morale high, that's what we're going to do because we are for the, and some of these people aren't even on my team. I just, if for the people who, you know, cause it does get expensive to fly across the country, pay for this, pay for that. And all that. It's like, if you're going to drop out of the King of the North, you can come crash in our Airbnb for free. Like we're doing everything we can to try to keep the community together. Right. While it's this dude like is gonna... taking shots at the, at the industry or day personally, you're literally just trying to say, Hey, we're behind the community. If you guys are making decisions, in any way that's going the same direction we are we're here yes. to support that yeah yes i mean i'll take some shots at dave but still <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. like it's, it's just so you community. know i want to i want to make it clear man I'm, I'm super impartial i want you to speak freely how you feel because that's oh, what i'm gonna about. but i'm very impartial I'm, I'm not gonna say that he's my buddy and i have his back i i support what's right you know what i mean i support see that's um, the thing I, I was his buddy and i did have his back yeah. you know i just didn't agree with how he handled this one situation and then we, so we pulled our sponsorship and he, he bans me, he bans us. And it's just, you know, and I've spoken with some of the referees who were in a giant group chat text and the dude's just, he's unhinged, plain and simple, like just unhinged. Cause this is not good for the powerlifting community. I mean, cause if somebody were to say that we don't do a lot for the community, it's a lie. Either that or they're just delusional. It's a lie because we do more for the community than anybody not being selfish or, or, or self project or self promoting or anything in that regard, but that's just truth. That's reality. I'll bring 10 athletes. We'll sponsor it. We'll throw four grand up. We'll do this. We'll do that. People want to go to nationals and represent North Dakota. We'll buy the Airbnb. We'll pay for your meat fees. Well, anything we can do to help get you there. We'll do. Our next sponsorship move was Olympia. Yeah. We were going to sponsor the, the four people, Four overalls from this meet coming up. We we're going to cover their meet fees and lodging for the Olympia. Go listen to the Olympia. Go do something. Get big. out of here. Go have fun. We'll be there for sure. Because it's Olympia. We're not going to be there. But do something big. Let's go do this. It's free. All you got to do is get there. Your, your lodging's free. Your food is free. The meat's free. But that's where we wanted to head with this anyways. We like our, our ambition and one of our goals being sponsors with the with the USPA at this time was to build those awards and those prizes into something that like I've done one powerlifting meet personally it was it was cool I mean I I didn't know anything about what I was doing I didn't know the calls I didn't know what best lifter was and I won that I thought it was like a most spirited award so I was like very oh they like me they think I'm fun (laughs) Um, but it was really cool and then (laughs) like the, the way it felt like I, I was like 114 pounds and I went up and I deadlifted, I squatted, I benched. I was like, this isn't something I ever thought I would ever do. And I've never let go of that feeling. I've not stepped back on the platform because I have my own, my own stuff I have going on, but being involved and being able to, you know, be a part of other people's journeys as they chase that feeling and they get to experience that moment on the platform where they did the damn thing. That's everything to me. And like, to be able to award that in a way like we handed out those checks i had a girl get a hold of me and say thank you because she didn't anticipate it and she needed it it wasn't just a prize money it was rent it was food on her table and she didn't know that she was working her ass off every day for that she just knew she was working her ass off every day to step on the platform 
but to be able to reinforce how well she did and how hard she worked and make her feel that and know that she felt that, that I was so ready to just keep going all in on mm -hmm. everything we could do. It was everything to us. So, so at this point then with, with everything that's going on and, and uh, the very clear um, dislike or beef between, between you and Dave, uh, you guys are now two different federations. Um, there is a, a, a pretty extreme community divide, which apparently it looks like you guys have, you know, a lot of support on your side and he's got a lot of support on his side, which makes the divide that much bigger. Um, I'm not sure how much support he has on his side. Oh, I've seen some, I'll just put that, you know, I, I've seen at least locally over here in, in Fargo oh, and I'm sure it has to be because, because it's local and stuff. And, and a lot of those people are athletes from, from my gym and whatnot too. Um, but that doesn't mean that that their feelings about the situation are accurate. Um, it, it, facts are facts, man. If these are some of the things that happened and took place that you guys are saying, then I stand in agreement that some of this is bullshit and some of this is completely out of fucking line and and not appropriate for what's going on and or what should be going on within the industry. Uh, in the same breath, I'm gonna uh, afford Dave the opportunity to say his piece. Um, and, really? and, my, and I'm not gonna show him what we talked about to give him an opportunity to you know, rebuttal anything you guys have to say. I'm going to let him speak his truth, and then we're going to just let the community see what both sides are. Let him try to rebuttal it. You can't rebuttal facts, man. Yeah, I well, agree. Right. If there's facts, you can't. And and, and uh, but what I what I I guess the the point of of doing all this to 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 get to the end point of this at the end of the day, we we would love to find a way, even through beef, man. Like I come I come from. From I'm born and raised in California, man. I come from from gang life out there, and there's one thing I'm very familiar with is that when when people beef and they fight, man, where we come from, once you get that off your chest, you're able to shake hands, reconcile, and move move forward. Whether that means you move forward together or you just move your separate ways, and there's no longer a strife, and you've allowed the people that were beneath you to see that there's some neutralization of the situation, and they can come together. What are the possibilities of once this everything's been aired out, that you guys might sit at the same table and have a conversation where you I don't want any part of them. Oh, me and him sit down at the same. Yeah. First yeah. of all, first of all, let me just interject real quick, because um, there's going to be a big difference between us and between him, and it's going to be that he's speaking for the people that are beneath him, and we're speaking for the people that are standing next to us. I don't think we'll sit at the same table anytime soon. I don't want any part of it. I mean, unless it's like, hey, let's sit down and talk this out and record it and let me embarrass the shit out of you. Sure. 100% down. Wow. I'm all about it. But I don't suspect he's going to do that because, I mean, there's nothing he can say. That's not, every single thing I've said is truth and fact. And at any sane person, any person with any real morality or genuine good-hearted people, are, none of this was appropriate. Sure. None of this was appropriate. And additionally... My athletes don't get this back. They don't get back the last, you know, their whole prep. They don't get back this meat that they miss with their right. coach. You exactly. stole that from them because you're a selfish little. He's, I'm sorry. He, he stole that. He stole that from them. We didn't do anything. We pulled our sponsorship. Honestly, one of the last ones to do it in the entire the entire federation. We wanted. We to wanted him a chance to do the right. Fix it, man. And I talked to him about it. Make it transparent. The people that need to know know. Dude, that's not the right answer. That's not the right answer. There's not a single sports organization within the United States that's going to ban somebody or someone's going to step down. That they're not at least going to say who it is. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're trying I mean, to. What are you trying to? Like you're you're making it look like you're hiding something, and that's how the people are going to perceive it. And if the people perceive it that way, if you're hiding something, you're lying about something. If you're lying about something, what are you lying about? And then it turns into a giant problem. Do you think, uh, or what do you think would be a good way to like solve an issue like this from happening again? I get like, because obviously we've been in and around the bodybuilding community more than powerlifting, and it, I mean, it's a pay to play sport where mm -hmm. there's one individual that pretty much runs the state in putting on the shows, uh, or a chairman, obviously. So, uh, how do you think you could have, or we could fix this as a community, uh, and come together, uh, and make sure this doesn't happen again, other than transparency? through this one director wrpf wait i mean that's it is what it is i mean if you want other lifters from other states to come in like they have been we've been pulling lifters from iowa from south dakota from montana from wyoming minnesota like we've been pulling lifters from these other states because 
our hosts, our, 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 our meets are good. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, these, these sponsors are, are putting up legitimate stuff and rewards. I mean, it's, it's fun, you know, and, and our lifters are strong. Like people are getting, it's getting really competitive. Like I said, you know, 10 years ago when I was doing it, you know, a 600 pound deadlift was winning. Now there's kids opening up with like 685, 700, you know? So like the, the sport has evolved to the point to where if you want to be competitive, you can go to like, there's a few states that have some, you know, some monsters. North Dakota is becoming one of them, you know, and how we fix that. The WRPF, man, that's really it. They're the ones stepping up in every other state. They're the ones coming together collectively. It's, I mean, hard not to want to go the way that keeps us involved the most in the larger community. And like, you know, Al in South Dakota, I've been back and forth with him, but like he's going WRPF. You know, I'm, I'm going to this big meet we're going to in Vegas. I'm going to go and coach it and I'm going to hang out with the director for a little while. And then I'm going to another meet in Colorado to go judge. Like we're going to grow the community. We're going to piece it back together. And the only reason I never judged here is because we had plenty and I prefer to coach. But if I have to step back a little bit from coaching in order to try to help bring the community back together and bring powerlifting back to North Dakota, because no one's going to go to the XBC aside from the people that are here, are here, you know, and then even then, what does the XBC provide? Right. You know, like well, what sponsors are going to come to Dave now? You know I mean? Who's going to come help you support and run your meets? I mean, sure. He's got all the equipment, but who's going to come? What sponsor is going to come? You banned one for, for standing with the other ones that left already. Iron Rebel left, Pioneer left, Squat to Death left. Squat to Death is in South Dakota. Yeah. You know what I mean? They all left. Why would they come and support a guy who's banning a company for doing the same thing that they did? They stand with morality the same way we did. You know, I don't see how he's ever going to grow the XPC into really anything outside of, I don't know, 20 people maybe. And at that point, is it even worth doing a meet? Why not just go to another state and lift for the XPC? Right. Whether whether there's something that will they have actual rewards, whether they have it's something special, something more than just a group of people getting together in a garage. Yeah. So it's almost like there could be a, a stigma now on, you know, potentially working with Dave as a sponsor and wondering if he's ever gonna boot you or, or get rid of you out the blue or something. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's, 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 it's just don't children. emotionally trigger him. Just don't right, get, just right, don't exactly. hurt his feelings. That's what, that's what it, it, it seems like that would be something you'd have to be aware of or concerned about is that if you emotionally trigger somebody who reacts that way then. And it's like him, him banning us, it didn't financially impact us. At it all. didn't, it didn't hurt our but business. But you're an investor. You didn't make but, money off of this. But what it, did is it hurt us he made something that was not about him very personal and he took away he did exactly what is happening on the whole and he took away voices again and by continuing to make this about himself while we were in the middle of a crisis about women and children and victims and that we have to sit on a podcast and talk about why you kicked our company out of a, out of attending a federation instead of talking about all these people who have been hurt all of these athletes within our federation who have been hurt and subjected to this bullshit and we are sitting here talking about you yeah how do you like is that what the what, what's going on here <laughs> yeah this is a problem this is a yeah. problem for me he's selfish narrow-minded just straight trash I don't give a shit. He's trash to me now. Ultimately, what's going to move North Dakota forward again with powerlifting is going to be a community built on trust, respect, and safety. Without those things, there is no real community. There is no real outreach. There is no real athletes who want to go lift where they don't feel safe, loved, and respected. It's not, it's not the right environment. And so... I think that beyond federations, beyond this, that, and the next, I think it's really going to be coming back collectively and moving forward with the athletes and making it about the athletes. So with the WRPF, then is this a federation that is already doing the background checks and everything that the USPA failed to do? And I so think that every single federation sure. now watching the, the USPA turn into an absolute shit show <laughs> they're all they're all going to be doing their due diligence 
way more now than they ever have just to mitigate the possibility of something slipping through the cracks and them burning as well. And not to mention the WRPF has done a lot to go out of their way to make sure that they yeah. are prepared for this move. When they saw what was happening, not only did they make sure that their team was collective and correct and lined out, but they reached out to other people and said, hey, you know this sport, you know these athletes, you know this world. What do you say about helping us be better at this, do better at this, become bigger? Like they reached out to athletes, they reached out to coaches, they reached out to the people building the sport. Mm -hmm. They they made and moves that showed that they cared about these all these athletes that left hanging. And then additionally, they're they're waiving fees. If you're signed up for USPA event and you want to pull out of it, they're waiving the fees. Now I understand that's a capitalistic move at the same time. It's, it's still a good business move, but it's still the the writing's on the wall. They're going to take over. They don't yeah. have to do that. Somebody needs to open a door, and they yeah, opened right. their door. I'm going to say the, good the, the news jacking is a real thing. It's it's a marketing tactic that you learn when you take any kind of marketing. They call it news jacking. Mm -hmm. You see an opportunity to voice your opinion or get involved or be the first one to deliver something. Oh, they're doing it. On. So so that's huge. And, and the only thing that I would say is, have you has, have you gotten any confirmation or understanding? Because some of the buzz that I've heard uh, people are speculating is that the, the and, and rightfully so, I wouldn't even argue that it's wrong of them to do it, but that the WRPF is actually the federation who exposed this to Goob and we're waiting for the opportunity to jump and capitalize Maybe. on this. Even. maybe so but do you blame them for exposing a woman who's doing what she did in that video or do you blame oh God, them for no, exposing a man really who's touching kids like yeah. call yeah. it opportunistic if you want but this needs to come to light Absolutely. and then somebody needs there to catch everything when it falls and then all the state directors a lot of the a, a lot of all the good ones have left the w the uspa to go to the wrpf so now you're taking all the good from one and sticking them Essentially located within another federation, and you're they're booting all the other ones, or they're quitting and going to the XBC or wherever else they want to go. Doesn't matter to me because so, it, it doesn't matter. So, so the XBC, this is I, I'm not really too familiar with them. I know the XBC runs from the Arnold, as far as I remember. That's that's, that's all I know of them. Place where they have the most notoriety <laughs> from. Is that correct? Yeah, but even that, I mean, our meets are bigger than the XBC at the Arnold. Yeah, it's not that big. It's a one day event and there's, it's not, well, it might not be one day. I'm pretty sure it's one day, but it might be two. Irrelevant to the reality. It's not that big. I think it's more than one day this year. Oh, then maybe it's more than one day this year, but it's not really all that big. Yeah. You know what I'm, I mean? I'm, and, I'm and, 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 and getting, and getting, getting the qualification or, or getting the, um, the invite or I guess, I don't know what the right word would be. Getting an invite or, or qualifying for it isn't something that's exclusive only to the XPC. Like you can go do a strongman event for the U.S. strongman and get invited to the XPC deadlift competition. That's not even the same sport, but you can still qualify for it. Gotcha. It's not like you have to be in the XPC to go lift the Arnold. They can sit there and flex it all day, but congratulations. Right. There's 16 other federations here. There's guys from overseas that have no idea what XPC really even is that show up to lift at the, at the Arnold. You know, yeah. so whatever. Like that's yeah. bullshit to me. That so the impact's not exclusive to XPC competitors. I've seen you no. and everybody getting no. invited. I mean, I'm going there here in March with one of our athletes, and he was a USPA member. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so well, that's that's um obviously you guys you guys have a lot of facts on the table. Um, I, I'm not going to ask you for any receipts, particularly. I'm just going to take your word for it and, and trust that you guys are. Shit. You want him because I want to believe he, that he denies anything. Ask me for him. I'll send them to you. I'll post them. I'll tag you. I'll do whatever you want me to do. And if you want to sit down, if you want me to drive to Fargo to sit down at a table and have a conversation between the two of you, hundred percent would be willing to. Yeah. It's not going to be fun. It's going to be fun for me. Sure. I, I think it'll shit. be fun for me. <laughs> but, but that's because I'm, 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 I'm being I'm straight up, man. Like I'm going to embarrass the shit out of that dude. But look, and I, I bet you he. I, I would be willing to bet he wouldn't even show up, or he wouldn't even take the meeting. Yeah, because know he, he knows would. he's wrong. I don't he know knows he's he wrong. I did ask him that if if he would be willing to do that, even if after we did individual ones, is after if afterwards he'd be willing to sit. Down. Ask him. I'm all about it, bro. I would love to have, even if it was a hundred percent discussion. I think between me and Dion, we could keep you guys from banging each other up. 
But I with the argument itself is, man, that might be the fuel that's needed to get shit off it's your like chest. A, you know what I'm five, saying? Five, six, hobbit, man. No, like, they're not yeah. talking about keeping him back. They're talking about keeping you back. <laughs> it sounds like we might that's, have that's my background <laughs> he doesn't want to catch these hands man like that's my background dude. Um, he's he's uh, he's uncoordinated i'm not even getting all that sorry you know but that's what i did for i get it i get i get the i get the frustration I, I i see it's very clear to me that um and i think dion would agree with me you guys are very passionate and and it shows um not just in the way that you express it but the things that you have done, you've put the work in to show, you know, proof and evidence that your passion is real and, and that your care is genuine about the athletes about the sports and whatnot. So um, I, I really commend you guys for that. Uh, up until this point, I've only seen you guys on social media. I didn't really know anything about you. Nick spoke really highly of you and said that you guys were oh, amazing. Nick's great. That I would love, love having him. a conversation with you guys. So I do appreciate you guys wanting to come on and do this. Even if all we really get to do is air out what you guys feel went down versus what he says went down and that's all we get to put out. I'm happy that we were able to at least somehow put it on a platform and give people an opportunity to really see collectively both sides of the story because what that at the very little that allows everyone to form their own opinion based on facts coming from mm -hmm. what I would say is the horse's mouth on each side right. Mm -hmm. um, so at that point and, and that's kind of how I'm doing this man I, 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 I'm certain that I will take a stance on who was right and who was wrong here once I've heard both versions of the story thoroughly. Um, and if I have a hard time deciding, then I might, and if you care to give it to me because I'm a nobody, but I might say, hey, can I see some of your receipts? Just to help I'll you send all to you now. <laughs> I'll screenshot all that shit right now and send it to you. Right on, man. But but so anything b before we really bring this to an end, because I don't want you guys to, to not say something that you wanted to say or leave anything out. This, as far as this particular um, modcast goes, we're not concerned with language or anything. I want you to speak your mind. I want you to get it off your chest, man. But is, before we bring it to a close, is there any th piece that you left out or anything that you want to say that you haven't yet said to really kind of give you peace of mind about the situation and the fact that you know other people are going to get to hear your version of the story from the horses? I would mind? love to sit down, the four of us, sit okay. down. And let's have that. We, we could right then and there. And then when this is over... I would love the four of you and everybody else to dial back into what we're supposed to be focused on right now. Absolutely. Back to the athletes, back to the platform. This That's where point. we need to be. Yeah. This and is so I like that you're doing this. Yeah. This is awesome. I, I think that it's great. Yeah. I think it's, I love people getting to hear both sides without a table argument in the middle of it. Yes. And I love people having the opportunity to walk the direction that they choose. I think that that is completely important and valid. And I think that this is a great opportunity and a great platform to do that with. Um, but I am looking forward to us all getting through this and moving forward and getting back to focus on what's really important and creating that environment again, that is safe, that is respected and is trusted. I agree a hundred percent with everything you said. And that's the point of this is, like I said, I want to fast track the drama because the divide is ugly. It sucks to see it within the community, the powerlifting community, like you guys said, just really started to grow and take off. And I agree with you, it grew itself. Um, there's obviously contributing factors involved that come from Dave and everyone else involved. But at the end of the day, the community grew itself because it just overall, it liked its own community and it got bigger mm -hmm. and better than that. It doesn't uh, matter who the director was. It wouldn't matter who the director is. The director is just directing the meet. The host makes it something special. The, the athletes and the coaches grow it. Hey man, I mean, you, you, know show, you show up with some with some flamethrowers like in a DJ, bro. I don't give a shit. That's not everyone does that. Yeah, that's nothing special. Yeah, I'm a no. strong believer that sponsors um, really help to to make the events and and everything happen too. You guys are huge contributors from what you tell me, and I, I commend you for that. I like to try and sponsor as much as I do too. You see my companies um, throughout all these events. Also, I, nice. I love you sponsored the bodybuilding stuff. Yeah. We when sponsor bodybuilding, we sponsor powerlifting, we sponsor mm -hmm. MMA fights, we sponsor anything. Yeah, um, I've, I've seen H&I since I did my first bodybuilding show in Bikini in like 2017. Yeah, like, yeah we've been, Metroflex and H&I have been sponsoring uh, bodybuilding shows for a long time. So it, it's just something we're passionate like you guys are about the industry. I'm pretty sure I have one of your old like red strap bags from back then too that uh, i got yeah, like I a bunch you, of i, I went in and got a bunch of stuff i was like yeah. okay <laughs> absolutely and yeah yeah if, if y'all want to collab on some shit later i mean offline businessy stuff 
That's not off the I mean, table, brother. In fact, I got, some things, I'm down. I got some things coming up I can't talk about on this particularly, um, but announcements are in the coming weeks. So I would love to, to touch base with you guys and have a conversation about um, maybe some potential to work together because I, I got a lot, of, a lot of things coming up. Line. So that'd be awesome. Um, I don't, I don't want to make this too short. I hope you guys were able to get off what you needed to. I would love to have a sit down face to face, even if it's got to be an argument, brother. I think that would be a good way for you guys to get some of it off your chest for real. And, and you, facts. I would love that. to see, if, hey man, if your receipts are real, I would love to see Dave say, you know what, I was fucking wrong. I made a bad decision. It was done. Oh, in man, the that day. honestly, you know what I mean, dude. That would be powerful he, for somebody to do at some point here. Whoever's truly in the wrong, and I would love to be a part of bringing that to the table. That's my number one objective. I want to stop the divide or get through the drama as fast as possible, so we can get things back to whatever the new normal is going to be within this community. Uh, so, any way that I can contribute to that, man, I'd love to do so. Yeah, I hate that. Yeah, I agree. If if he if he were to like own it, own the shit, yeah. All right, man. It's been the whole thing. I don't like you. I still don't like you now, but I'm not going to talk shit to you. You know, like, I'm yeah. let it be. Hey, letting but, bygones be bygones is just as manly as a fist fighting, brother. So, but until then, he's trash. I'll let you ride with that, homie. That's that's yours to have. <laughs> I'm not going to take that away. I, I believe in what you say, man, and, and I believe that you believe your truth is truth. So, I will let Dave say his piece. I'll put them together. I'll let you guys know when we drop this. It'll probably be. Sometimes shortly after we get an opportunity to get him recorded too, I'm going to release them together. So it'll be like a part one and a part two. Um, that way everyone gets it collectively. And then hopefully we can make a part three where there is some, some real uh, expression. All about it. In person, man. hundred percent, man. You let me awesome. know. I'll make my way to Fargo. I appreciate it, man. I really appreciate you guys and everything you do for, for the industry uh, across the board. Um, S4 athletics uh, seems to be uh, really growing rapidly and, and making a name for itself. Uh, I personally would, would love to get behind and support you guys in, in a bigger way, too. So I right um, love the story. Like I said, Tristan, I would love to have you on uh, again and when the smoke clears and we can get to something a little bit more uh, uh, PG and, and less aggressive and and talk about the, the story that's behind S4 a little bit more involved, because I understand it to be an amazing story. And, and uh, I commend you both for everything that you do and the way that you stand up for the athletes and not just a federation but overall the community of, of lifters within powerlifting that's man it's, that's just, it's just it's all love man it's all love it's love awesome. for the sport love for the athletes love for, it's just love for the community you know then yeah. I, I appreciate you doing this yeah right on, i mean I'm we came from in. our intentions were good with our decision they were for the athletes they were for the victims and to stand on the right side while things got cleared up so in the end like we still want what's right we still want what's good and we still appreciate everybody who's doing their best to play a part in this that either leads to a, a, a better end result or you know assists in getting through this and that's something that you guys are doing here and so I think that's great and mm -hmm. we appreciate you having us on and giving us an opportunity and a platform to speak our truth and speak our side of the story because I do think that's important not to divide not to separate but to give people the opportunity to develop their own perspectives. Awesome. That's dope. I really thank you guys a lot. I appreciate everything that you're doing. Like I said, uh, thanks for this opportunity as well, for giving us a chance to, to yeah, be a part of the process, man. So we'll be in touch. Yeah. Um, if you want to send me receipts, man, I'll take them. I, I would love to have them on, on the table when I have a conversation with Dave. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be as real and genuine as I can, like I am with you guys. I'm not taking a side yet, but when I de have Dave here, I'd love to challenge him. Um, with some of those facts that you show me so that I can say, well, I'm seeing it this way. What, what, how can you clear the air on this? Whatever it may be. You know what I mean? So, um, text, I would I'll, 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 I'll text, I'll DM you my phone number, text me, and then I'll just blow your phone up with screenshots. Right on, brother. Well, again, appreciate you guys. Keep doing what you're doing, man. And, and we definitely will reconnect and see if we can't find a way to collab. Yep. For sure, man. I like it. Right yeah, on. it was great. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you. Guys. you. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Thanks, right, man. Later, later, guys. All right, and we are back. Wow, that was good. That was good. Joe's heated. Yeah, Joe's, a little bit. Joe's. Um, he's definitely passionate. Um, he's got he's got some um animosity towards the situation or towards Dave Stenson, as, as you can tell. But I will I will say that I don't think it's um out of the question that Joe would sit down and have a conversation with Dave. Yeah. It might be a little aggressive conversation, but I think both guys are kind of hard headed like that. And they'll, and they'll be able to carry their own and have that kind of a conversation without it getting any further yeah. than, than a discussion or a potential argument. But it, you can see how passionate 
he is. And you can see how sincere they both are about the situation and what went down. And they truly believe um, where they stand. In fact, Joe's offering up um, facts, receipts yeah. and, and evidence of of the things he's saying to back it up. So um, I do have that stuff in my possession now. And, and uh, we've looked it over. And I mean, it everything looks credible as far as as what he's saying based on who's telling him what. Yeah, that doesn't mean it's truth. It just means someone actually did share that with him and people did say the things he said. Um, and so it's up to you guys to kind of discern wh- where you stand from there. And we're not going to um, try to sway anybody in any one direction. Our number one intention is to stop the divide and, and see mm-hmm. if we can't all just let bygones be bygones and, and be professionals in, in this sport or whatever they're doing. So, yeah, which I, I mean, I, I, from hearing what Joe and them said, and, and once we roll the tape on what Dave said, I feel as if if we can get that next podcast in with them together in the same room, I can't imagine it's going to be too aggressive. I feel like they'll both kind of gain some understanding yeah. from each other by listening. I think they might cuss a little and, and maybe and, and, and argue a little with each other, but I think it's, I do that with Cody given. every yeah, time. Yeah. Here. You know, <laughs> I think it's a given though, considering, like I said, how, how, how passionate they both are and, and, um, you know, how sincere they are about yeah, the way I mean, they feel about the sport and the athletes and everything like that. So yeah. there's some rights and some wrongs on both sides. Um, I think it's pretty subjective though. Yeah. Um, it's not to say that if you think someone's right and you think someone's wrong, that you're right in that sense either. It's just that your understanding or your belief system about what's going down weighs one direction or the other. Yeah. I mean, especially when you're a coach of athletes that are participating in the sport that you can no yes. longer go to in your area, which is, yeah. it makes it pretty tough for, uh, a coach to to be told that you know that's, absolutely that's your job is to be there for them and when you can't do your job fully when you usually are going above and beyond i mean that hurts yeah yeah i also think that um after doing dave's interview mm-hmm. um I, I think it'll change some of joe's opinion too i, I think mm-hmm. dave dave seemed a lot more calm and, and and comfortable with where things are yeah um i know they both say they don't really give a shit about where the other one stands or what they want to do and yeah and, and as men they have that right um i don't know if it'll stay that way though i feel like dave was pretty open-minded to having a discussion at the end of our our interview with dave so um we'll let you guys be the judge of that though so let's not waste any time this is a long enough episode so let's jump right into dave's uh interview we did have him in studio here so uh we'll get to that and then we'll close this out at the end so uh without further ado Dave Stensley. So yeah. <laughs> so Dion Larry's in the house, and then this uh, episode we also have. I don't even know how to title you anymore, other than <laughs> Dave Stenslin. But you're the chairman of uh, North Dakota Powerlifting in some uh, yeah. federation. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still with USBA for a couple of months, and then we're uh, right. switching over. So cool. That's a that's actually a, a quick lead into what we're talking about here. Um, real quick. So so with the USPA situation, there's no um hangups or or conflicts of interest or anything with you also running xpc alongside that um well our first xpc competition won't be until this summer the massonomics uh, classic which is in july okay so we're basically still with uspa until the end of the king of the north um once i turn in the results for that and we're going to be switching over completely got you so Okay, well, I guess they can't really say or do much about it Wait, at this point, right? So the the stats for people's lifts go into USPA for this next meet. Uh, yep yeah, the the King of the North is still um, sanctioned through the USPA. Okay, so all right, makes yeah. sense. It was just one of those things where it's just it was can't too close out. to swap and make everything happen. Whereas people signed up, they got memberships already. Um, whereas we can with the July one, and we can, you know, forecast and get everyone switched over. Yeah, cool. All right. So we're, we're jumping a little ahead with with uh, the details on that, and and I do want to to be fair because this will be a pretty long episode with multiple interviews in one. Mm-hmm. Um, we try to keep it forty five minutes to an hour, it, as long as we're getting everything that you need to say. Because I wanted to be one hundred percent fair across the board. And and to those who don't know what they're tuning into here, this is basically part two of me and Dion uh, sitting down um, over a situation that I think kind of. Got a little crazy out of hand um, regarding some stuff going on in the USPA that started with Goob. And there's that camera magic we were talking about. That was quick. Hopefully it's just the last one. So, anyways, it started with this guy, Goob U, 
on Instagram who's um, more known for calling people out on Photoshop shit. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but over the course of all his calling out of like bodybuilders and fitness influencers on Instagram and whatnot for their Photoshopping, he would sometimes get a little um, involved in other things like criminal records of certain mm-hmm. individuals within the industry, you know, as far yep. as fitness goes and whatnot. And I think that kind of led him to getting his hands on some details about some stuff that was going on in the USPA with yeah. one of the, like a head judge from, what was it? Arkansas uh, or something? Missouri or, or Missouri? Something like that. Um, Let's see. No, I think it was uh, Chico who was uh, Ohio. Ohio. Okay. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the other one that he spoke of was uh, out of Texas, Bobby. Yeah. yeah. And this, so this girl, um, she was pissed at her neighbors or something. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> she was uh, Stephanie, who was with the um, with Vermont USPA. She was Vermont. the state chairman. Okay, and I, I I saw the video and like some of the background of it and what it entailed was she got into some argument with a neighbor, somebody in her yeah. community or something, yeah. and something to do with dogs. And the yeah. next thing you know, she's wiping her juices all over somebody's door. Yeah. <laughs> so. That was foul. And Why would you do that when you see someone clearly with a f- fucking camera in your face? Too? Yeah. Like, people just don't think anymore. Like the world's not real anymore. So they're just like, ah, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know whose first response is to dig in their pants and wipe it on the door. But that was hers, I guess. Yeah. So that sent things basically <laughs> yeah. haywire for the USPA so we could get to the chase pretty quick. Here. Yeah. Um, that just <laughs> led Goob down a path of like more and more discoveries you know so you know one thing compounded on top of the other next thing you know there's this crazy shit going on within the federation Mm -hmm. i think quick and to the point and if i leave anything out feel free to jump in either one of you but um essentially what happened is there was a discovery made that the uspa is supposed to be doing background checks on anyone working within the federation all of the results that goob was finding with all these different people from different states within different federal or different uh um regions of of the uspa's um, uh, surroundings or whatever. Yeah, he started to just basically go. Wait a minute, you guys aren't background checking nobody. We got sexual assaults in here. We got mm-hmm. pedophilia. We've got abuse. We've got all these different things coming up in all these other locations that he started to look into. And people obviously sending him shit. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, he's just like, oh, the USPA is not holding up their end of yeah. the deal in regards to the safety of oh, the competitors correct. and people within that. Yeah, and I believe it was like 2020. They, they came out and they said they were going to do complete background checks on everybody. And from my understanding, all that was done was when you became a referee, they just made sure you weren't on the sex offender list, and that was it. Okay. So, like, that and a complete background are two different things yeah right right yeah, right, so right for sure they uh i mean some credit to them i didn't know that part at least they were looking in the right place yeah for for one primary criteria but yeah. but in the same breath how many um or all, yeah exactly you know what i mean yeah like the people that you should be aware of or afraid of yeah, yeah well, are well, just sexual predators <laughs> well, well and that's the thing too is like the two that did get fired with all this that was uh donnie tudal out of montana and then uh, Chico out of Ohio. And the thing is, is even with the background check, I, they're, they're nothing would have shown up anyways on those okay. two because what it was was they were just predators who were, uh. you know, just, you know, stalking their prey um, literally at meets and competitions. So they were known for this, so um, to speak, or what? There were a new, numerous complaints, I know, with the one in Montana. Um, some of them were even like North Dakota people. Okay. That See, up. and so. that was part of the part of the reason why he kept going is because people were sending him like emails of them emailing USPA, and, they and did, the, that's they did right, yeah, about yeah. It. yeah. And see, that's the thing is, is what, what they the were U- pretending they were going to do something, and then exactly. nothing ever came. Cor- of yeah. yeah, and and that was the thing is, is like I know they got complaints. Like I turned in complaints, and they never went anywhere either. And it was just one of those things where you never heard nothing back, yeah. and. Honestly, the way the USP office was set up right now, well, at the time, is it's literally run by powerlifters. Like, mm-hmm. there's nobody there who sh- should be an HR person that's yeah, qualified yeah. to do that. It's, <laughs> it's just some old guy who used to lift things up and put them down. And it's like, okay, you, you probably shouldn't be in this position to be handling <laughs> right, these complaints. Right, right. They're so, overreacting. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, yeah. Back in my day, we always got away with that <laughs> yeah. shit. It was the big deal. Like, <laughs> but but seriously, that's the way it's set up. Is it's yeah. literally you know two three guys in the office in California, and it's like, 
Okay, you, you probably should hire somebody that should be literally looking into these complaints because yeah. we had one out of North Dakota um, with uh, a lifter that was involved and they turned all their stuff in and they, you know, they sent it to me and I'm like, well, you need to send it to the main office. I mean, I, I'm a volunteer at my level with the state and I'm not qualified to handle any of those kind of complaints either. Right, right. Right. So thinking that, oh, this is the right thing to do, send it on to the main office. Well, it went on and did, went nowhere, and they did nothing with it. I don't. So that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, so fair to say, it's rightfully deserved where they're what they're getting right now and where they're I, headed. I, I believe. so. Yeah. Okay. And As a federation, I mean, I agree with that 100. percent They should have yeah. been doing their due diligence and and genuinely looking out for the safety of mm-hmm. people, especially when you're getting complaints coming in. So. Yeah, and, and then that's kind of like where we we stood here in North Dakota was the fact that you know they they with all the stuff that came to light. Um, the USPA did come through and apologize and they're like, we're going to change this and put this together and make this happen. And I'm like, okay, I can get on board with that. And, you know, at, at one point um, I was going to be looking at to be on the committee, the new committee that's formed for the Midwest and be involved in these changes. Mm. And well, then it got to a point where then USPA just like overnight decided, Oh, no, we're not involved in any of this. This is all fake. This is, and it's like, you just apologized for it. You just yeah, admitted yeah. we need to make changes. And at that point, that's when like me and my wife and a lot of other people in the Midwest were like, okay, we're out. Yeah. So good call. So that's also about the time then things got a little crazy locally for us. Yeah. Um, and been- which is kind of part of the, the, the majority of the reason why we're here is I don't know what, if anything's going to get done about it, but what I would like to do is um, a cover one of the platforms that we've always wanted to cover, man. We wanted to to be a voice for the local industry here. It's kind of why we got into the businesses that we're in in the beginning. And this just kind of gives us a little bit more of that reach um, in that sense. So something comes about locally that seems to have divided um, at, at least powerlifting locally, which yeah. was becoming a really big scene for us, not yeah. just locally to Fargo, but like North Dakota oh, yeah. in general. It got it got really big. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I know there's a number of people to to uh, credit for it, but you created a platform um, for for that to take place, regardless of, of who is the one that made it happen. The platform was created. It's how I look mm-hmm. at things with Metroflex. All I say, look, Metroflex created the fucking platform, whether you like it or not. Mm-hmm. We did it first. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we created the platform. We might not have created the industry because obviously the people were here, but the industry wasn't doing what it's doing now before Metroflex. Oh, correct. Yeah, so honestly. so we created culture for the industry here for mm-hmm. all genres is kind of what our agenda was. Yep. Um, and I, and I, I, feel, I think it's fair enough to at least accredit you for that. You know, you you brought the platform, you made it happen, and and from there things just took off like wildfire for powerlifting. Yeah, and, and I mean, like when we got involved with putting on meets, um, the big thing was is like USP at the time, um, they would only do them out in like Dickinson, Williston, and the people that were putting them on were from Montana. Like, so it, yeah, for them to right. come any further, it was just like for them to run multiple states, it just yeah. wouldn't work. Right. And um, I got volunteered for the position and. Um, that's when I, I, we, we got together and we set up that first meet at Metroflex where yeah, we brought yeah. in, um, a meet director who actually came all the way from Missouri to make that happen. Right. And once we did that and we started putting them on locally like that, I mean, it blew up like literally like, yeah. I mean, it was one of those things where like people never saw meets like this. Yeah, yeah. And so it just kind of snowballed and we just kind of kept the momentum going. And, and, and that, and that's ideally like what me and my wife would like to do is just, you know, we want to keep the sport going. I mean, I, what banners behind us at the end of the day? I really don't care. I mean, we're still right, going to put right. our meats the same exact way we always have been. So mm-hmm. for sure. But, so, um, congrats to you for that, man. Because I witnessed it all happen. It was dope to to be a part of in the beginning too. Um, from there, things transition um, where now you'll have to give us a little backstory on the Joel Sullivan thing. Yeah. Um, but so, so I know I remember vividly back in the day, there was this big issue where he came, you know, to one of your meets yeah. as a guest appearance mm-hmm. and things went really bad behind the scenes. And, and there was all this social media, like uproar about the guy yeah. or some shit. What happened? Then? And um, last spring he came up to uh, the King of the North, which was out, out in Dickinson. Okay. Um, and he was coaching a few lifters cause it was a, we did a, uh, a test today and a non-test today. So he had a few athletes that were lifting. So uh, he came up there to handle his athletes. And in the meantime, um, we just ran into some issues where he, like, he was just 
out of getting out of hand basically with like yelling and screaming at like volunteers for the meat like the guys that are spotting and loading he was just yelling and screaming at these guys so but yeah he was you know yelling and screaming at these guys like telling them that they didn't take it fast enough they took it too fast and it's like okay <laughs> and, and so literally we had to like pull those spotters and loaders off to the side and be like don't listen to him listen to us we're the judge the head judge will say when to take it and you know just ignore who he, that, that guy over in the corner and that was what really set the tone was that kind of stuff just gotcha. but um and he had a lifter there, Austin uh, Hutzmiller, who's actually one of our referees as well, too. And he was competing. And I, he went for like a 672 or something. It was a, really, a pretty big squat. And he missed it. And when the spotters and loaders went to go grab it, um, I believe one of the spotters on the right side readjusted to get underneath the weight to get it. Get it. So it kind of like tipped a little bit. And, but, I mean, they still caught the weight. Nobody. Yeah. And that's where it all started. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so from there he just complained about the the way the meat was ran um and basically and how we do stuff up here but <laughs> fa- fast forward the next day um i believe it was his wa- not wife uh girlfriend somebody they made a post um, about you know oh we don't want to come back up to north dakota and um, God forsaken place, blah blah blah. Well, yeah, it was that's what I remember. And it was, <laughs> and it was like an inside thing with one of their lifters, um, you know, joking around with, and stuff. And Marshall Johnson responded with, you know, and, and, and of course that <laughs> fucking guy's in the middle of the drama, right? Uh, he doesn't do he's, that. He's he the fire starter, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I mean, Marshall responded with basically, I mean, he didn't call anybody any names. All he basically did was like, he stood up for, you know, North Dakota. I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah. I love our powerlifting community up here and we've done great things. And, you know, and from there, it just blew up yeah. to the point where, like, that day, I'm running the microphone. Marshall hates, um, like, social media influencers and celebrities <laughs> and shit. They don't get a fucking chance with him. Not even in a head start. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so you know, he, he responded to that post with that. Well, and it was like, okay, you know, whatever. And then, we're you know, we're still running the meet. And I'm on the microphone announcing for the day. And the next thing I know, I got Joe Sullivan coming up to my table, yelling and screaming at me, wanting to know where the F Marshall Johnson is. And I'm just like, you know, live mic here, you know, like, like right in front of everybody, he's yelling and cussing at me. And so I'm like, okay, dude, you got to tone it down. This was, Other, this was like the first one I wasn't at. I, <laughs> I was like, oh. And so at this point, I'm like, dude, you got to tone it down. Or, uh, uh, this is an official warning or you're out. Because like, I, I could already see like he's already yeah. pissed off. And yeah. I'm like, don't come yelling and screaming at me looking for a spectator. And I'm like, oh, he's around here somewhere because I'm like, Kathy's judging. Like, he didn't just up and abandon and leave her in Dickinson. So right, like, right. he's around here somewhere. Well, he goes and stomps off about how he's mad and he's going to fight somebody. And it's like, well, until he does, I'm going to run to keep this meat going because that's my, you know, yeah. my priority. Well, in the meantime, uh, Marshall comes back and, uh, Joe goes stomping over there, just um, getting confronting him about his post and all this kind of stuff like that. And it, and literally, it was just like I mean, I know Marshall invited him. To, he's like, you yeah, know, okay, let's talk about it. Sit down. Well, Joe was too mad to sit down, so he's standing there the whole time over Marshall, and it's just causing quite the scene. Obviously, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, um, but while it's still going on, our priority is you know, let's get this meat done. You know, keep the lifters going, and um, it finally they go their separate ways. Um, well, <laughs> we gotta figure that out. That's three times. Yeah, it usually only does it once, and then when we start it, it's it good going. for the rest of the time. Yeah. Sorry about that. <clears throat> it edits right through. Though, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I mean, they they broke up, went their way. Um, while they were talking, Marshall uh, with Marshall. Joe Sullivan comes over to me and like, you know, like I got to leave. We don't feel safe. All this kind of stuff. And it's like, okay. He's the one that ran up on everyone. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah he's not that. safe anymore. Yeah. So he, he made the comment that somebody or the complaint that somebody threatened to knock his teeth out. And I'm like, okay, well I wasn't there. I wasn't there. I, mean, I seen you guys were talking. Then that was it. So I'm like, well, if you're going to file a complaint, that's, you know, that's your prerogative. 
Um, I, what I can do on my end is I'll get statements from everybody that was involved, saw it, and go from there, and I'll turn it into the office. Yeah. So, I mean, that's all I could do, you know. And, you know, I, I shook their hand, and then they left. I feel like anybody that wants to go argue with another grown man who is also a power lifter should expect that somebody's going to tell him they'll knock his teeth in if he wants to keep talking like that. I mean, <laughs> if, you get a, if you get a tower over Marshall while he's sitting in a chair and yell at him like in a, in a defense mode like that, I'm pretty sure you don't have anything to be yeah. scared of, dude. I mean, you're Marshall really gave you a pass, bro. <laughs> you know, and, and that's the thing is, too, is, I mean, he made that decision, decision to go and confront Marshall about yeah. a social media media post yeah right and while his lifters are keep lift- in mind now this is why marshall fucking hates social media influencers because yeah. of what's most important to them has nothing to do with the industry yeah no, no i totally agree yeah you know it's, yeah i don't say he's yeah. wrong it's just uh he's always in the middle somewhere <laughs> he is he's somewhere in there I don't so, he's the best. <laughs> so in the middle of all this my thing is is i'm like you know as a lifter you're my coach that came all the way up here from vegas you just abandoned your lifters in the that are warming up, getting ready to lift on this platform to go about a social media post. Yeah. I'm like, that's that's kind of, I don't know. I'd be pretty disappointed. I'm like, that's where your priorities lie. For I sure. think, honestly, you could have confronted Marshall anytime, messaged him anytime, but to leave your lifters hanging like that, yeah, that's, that's pretty shitty. Self-centered, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you'd want to call it, you know, yeah. but... If it's spotted with a tail, it must be a leopard. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so, all right, let's fast forward again yep. a little bit more here. Okay. So now, so now, this is this Joe Sullivan guy. The backstory is important because I guess now at this point he says, "You know what? I'm a social media influencer. I'm going to take the lead on this and hold the USPA accountable on behalf of everybody." Yeah, and yeah, so yeah, he yeah. tried to like take the crown up and and mm-hmm. wear the jewels and do all that shit. Um, at which point, I think Marshall again shows up yeah and, and that's what it is i mean like Mar- uh joe sullivan and goob were pretty um tied hand in hand with a lot of the stuff that was going forward with uspa mm-hmm. and all the scandals and stuff yeah. that was coming to light and what it was was uspa invited joe sullivan to be on one of the calls where they're going to talk about okay well what can we do to go forward kind of thing and there was a lot of people who were kind of upset about that. Like, well, why is Joe Sullivan on this call? And, you know, me as a meat director, I'm like, well, why am I not involved? Like, you know, right, right. I'm, I'm right. like, I'm part of this organization, I thought. And so I ended up getting on one of the phone calls as well. But what happened with that was once Joe got invited to be on that phone call, Marshall made a post. Yes. And it was like, you know, Joe Sullivan doesn't speak for me yeah. or blah, blah, blah for North Dakota. And that is literally where, where, where the fire started. Yeah. It's With Marshall no in way. the middle. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Marshall, and, the fire starter Johnson. So, <laughs> That's a good name. I and like so, that. And so from that point on, like he made that post and he got attacked by a few people in the community, which was, you know, uh, Tristan with stage four. Yeah. And she went after him basically yelling and screaming about if you don't, you know, want Joe Sullivan to be on that phone call. You don't care for kids or the safety of people and blah, blah, blah. And I, then at that point I hopped in and I, 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 I'm like, well, just because he wants someone else to be on the phone call doesn't mean he doesn't like kids or like, you know, I'm like, he's like the poster child for relentless, yeah, which yeah. is like the what biggest powerlifting meet for kids, for kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so for, for them, which to, is funny. I just put him on our <laughs> website today on the new design as with, the kid on his shoulders yeah. as a backdrop of one of our like supplement pictures, but that's awesome. Yeah. Weird, weird coincidence we brought that up. <laughs> so it's one of those things where it's like, okay, you obviously don't know the, your history with this guy. So. Yeah. And so she attacked him about that, and then like I commented, and I'm like, you know, a key could have wanted Dan Bell, anyone else, it doesn't matter. It's just everyone has their own personal opinion, right? Well, and then what got it even more was the fact that uh, Nate Miller, another lifter in the community liked the post that Marshall put up. And so then she goes and attacks him about how he doesn't care about children and blah, 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 because he liked Marshall's post. <laughs> and and the thing, the, the part about this is like, Nate Miller's actually a cop. Okay. And as he's getting screamed at by, by you know, stage four, he literally is still doing paperwork for a, you know, domestic and child abuse case that he dealt with that night prior. Yeah. And it's like, he's actually out there dealing with it. 
So don't be going out and making claims that, you know, people don't care about kids. Yeah. It's like, he's actually doing it, you know, so. Good point. But that, that would have been January 21st. It was a Saturday and it was just like, everybody was going nuts on yeah. social yeah. media. I was seeing that's, that's when I started seeing all the fires. I was like, <laughs> yeah. whoa, what's going on? Well, well, and then like, that's kind of at the point where like me and Katie were like, well, do we really want to be associated with stage four if they're going to be literally attacking coaches, lifters, just because they have a different opinion? It's like, you know, at this point we're like, well, do we just go a separate, our own separate way quietly? Do we make a post about it? And we just kind of like, you know, let it go. And then uh, a few days later, Joe Sullivan gets back in the mix. Um, <laughs> so with Joe, what was it? Hmm. Yeah, no, it was had to do with USPA and Goob and all this kind of stuff. And so <clears throat> I uh, I turned some stuff into the USPA off because we had one of our referees who he has some military stuff going on, so he stepped down. And so I informed my guys that this guy stepped down um, at like 9.30. And then at like 12.45, 12.30, I get off work. I let USPA office know, like, hey, one of our referees stepped down. He's got some military stuff going on. Well, this is also the referee who Joe Sullivan has the issue with that was going to knock his teeth out, he caught said. Mm. So, so now I'm connecting the dots. Now, yeah. There we yeah. yeah. So that's okay. where North Dakota got involved with all this and Joe Sullivan. And so I, I I sent that email in at like 12 30, 12 45. And then by the time I go to pick up my kids at school, I'm literally in the line to pick them up. I got Joe Sullivan tagging me, uh USPA demanding why this guy stepped down and blah blah blah. And I'm just like, holy. Cow, I'm like, I literally just sent this email. <laughs> like, I bet the main office never even opened it yet. Wow. But he already knew and was already, like, wanting demanding answers and why Why are we doing stuff secretly without anybody knowing. <clears throat> so, that was with, uh, where that started. Now this makes more sense. So now this, is, this sense. is a lot more clear. Um, yeah. Because, so now, Joe, um, is it Luplo or Luplo? I can't. I don't remember I, if I'm saying. I think it's I think it's, I think it's a Luplo. I think so. Um, yeah. Sorry if I'm if I'm mm-hmm. disrespecting that. I don't mean to. Um, but Joe, when we talked to him, that's who he was talking about yep. then as we were going into that because that's where I got confused. Okay. I'm like, okay, so what's this big beef that everyone's saying about a local judge and this and that? So now yeah, that yeah. that makes sense, and I actually know that situation as well. So yeah. I'm, I'm familiar now. Now that the the dots are all connected. So this in in short, then this is where then the beef just really started coming down, right? Because now at this yeah. point, I'm seeing. Uh, Stensland comes out and says uh, we are no longer affiliated with uh, yeah. S four, et cetera, et cetera, and and they came out and said, "Wait, what's going on?" Like, well, it, well, what it all came back with um, with with Joe Sullivan. He first uh, tagged me in that in a post, yeah. you know, demanding answers. So, so I get on and I make a video, and I literally like, okay, well, you could have just asked me, Joe. Like, I, Joe Sullivan follows me. He could have just messaged me, I'm like, hey, what's going on? You know, he's messaged me before for things. Mm -hmm. Well, and so I made a video basically saying, hey, we got a referee who stepped down. He's got some stuff going on with the military, um, you know, with hearings and all this kind of stuff like that. So he just stepped to the side until that's all done and taken care of. Didn't have to do with the situation with him and last year at all. Right. And so. Um, and so then I take Joe Sullivan in the video and I'm like, well, and then I let him know what else we're doing. Cause apparently I gotta let Joe Sullivan know what we're doing in North Dakota, you know? And that's what I brought up about how we're working with gyms, getting a list together, um, of people who, you know, that have been banned and kicked out of gyms. If, if it's been like inappropriate behavior and stuff like that, well, we would carry that over to our meets. And so, yeah, I actually remember you sending yeah. me that too. Yep. So that that the my video in response is actually what started everything. I was gonna say I don't see where I, I know I don't I don't see where the stage four athletics gets involved again. So if that's what I'm curious. <laughs> well, about. well, they're they're involved with with Joe and Briani. Um, I think Briani is one of the, the, someone that they sponsor. Like okay. she wears some of their stuff and tags their tags their brand and stuff Makes like sense. that. And um, so the next thing I know after that that evening. I get tagged in a post that, you know, stage four is not going to be involved with uh, USPA North Dakota. 
And so I'm just like, well, what's going on here? Like, you know, I literally was on the phone with you guys, you know, throughout the day. I didn't know we had an issue or anything. Well, they didn't like my response to Joe Sullivan. They thought it was sarcastic and very snarky. Mm. Hmm. So that's where that started. And, mm. and, we're, and then so like me and my wife were like, well, we don't have time for this either. So I mean, if you guys don't want to support us here locally, well, why are we, should we support you? I mean, you guys have been a vendor. Um, you've helped sponsor local events and stuff like that with us. And we've always appreciated it. Um, they've always uh, put up prizes for some of the lifters and stuff that won. Like uh, the last meet, uh, the North Dakota Open, they there was a they gave each overall winner a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so which yeah. is you know for a local competition that's pretty badass. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So and and that's how they've always been involved with us. They come out, set up a table, and you know support the event. Yeah, and this in doing so they support the lifters. And you know for them to come out and like say they don't want to support us locally like that, we were just kind of like okay. I mean I get it, the national level. Because, I mean, right now, nobody is. Yeah. Like, even us, you know, like, we don't even support what's going on right now. Right. So, for them to come out and make that statement for us, it kind of was just like a, kind of a, you know, kind of a, you know, gut check. Because it's like, yeah. you know, we're volunteering a lot of our time to put these competitions on. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, we don't have time for this. So, if you're not going to support us, I'm not going to support you. And that's literally what came down to it. There. So they came out and said they weren't going to support USBA first? Uh, well, they came out and they said they weren't going to support USBA North Dakota. Oh, like, North if they would have said just USBA in general. Then it would be I, I, I get that, because yeah. everyone was pulling out. But, okay. but for them to specifically come to, to us locally like that, I was kind of like, wow, that's, that hurts. But, yeah. Okay. yeah. But you, you know, that's your decision. So they did strike first, and essentially in the sense of, we're not working with you to the yes. we're not working with you yeah. either and so that, concept. And then so that was our response to them was, it's like, yeah. well, if that's the case, then well, we're not going to support you then. Right. So, but yeah, no, we, I literally was on the phone with Joe that, that evening, probably two to three hours prior. Damn. So, yeah, that's why I was just like, what is this? So, so you guys have like a beef beef now? Um... Not necessarily. We just kind of, I mean, like I talked, we just kind of went our separate ways. Um, I mean, because it, it, in the long run, honestly, it just hurts the lifters, honestly, because they, they didn't support us financially or anything like putting on the meats or anything like right. that. Everything they did, it went to the lifter. Yeah, it was helping the community in general. I yeah, guess. like they helped provide prizes. You know, they got the word out and stuff like that. It wasn't like they uh, came out and were like, oh, well, hey, we rented this venue for yeah, it was. We it, it, went all to, yeah, it, yeah, it all went to the lifters, is where their support went. So when they were like, "Well, we're not going to support you," it's like, "Huh, okay." So, yeah. So, so now and now they're with the. Is it the WRPF or? Um, I I honestly don't know. Um, I know they have some of their lifters that are going to a WRPF meet in Vegas in May. Okay, but um, we had a couple lifters from North Dakota who were already competing down there, and I think. They just got a few of theirs to go as well. Gotcha. So, a as a result of all this, and in, in now you seem way more chill. I'll tell, I'll say that than Joe did. Joe um, is not as chill as you about the situation. He's pretty upset. Um, he has a lot of feelings about the situation. But one thing he did say is that he would um, very happily come down and meet here face to face to have a third conversation if you were ever interested in doing so. Um, in which Dion and I both agree would we'd be happy to mediate that. And make sure it stays a screaming match or whatever it's yeah. going to be. Yeah. But you, but he like at some point here, the the biggest thing that I want to identify is like, yeah, there was there's a divide, right? There's there's people who are supporting S four, um, who are good friends with you, mm -hmm. um, and now they're being torn in one direction or the other. It seems like, and whether you guys want that to happen or not, at the end of the day, it's just happening, yeah. and like. Gyms are dividing even, you know, and it's because mm -hmm. of the people who stand behind Stanson versus the majority of the people who stand behind S4 are from two completely different, you know, regions of the town. Yeah. And so, like, we're seeing this and we're like, oh, man, this is this looks like shit, you know, like the way everyone's dividing themselves up and picking a side and shit. When mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like you said, yeah, the biggest thing that's being affected is the community itself. <laughs> Right. Yeah, like, exactly. like who cares? And I know Joe feels the same way. And I get you've told me the same thing. Like, you don't give a fuck about you and him being friends. 
you want to move forward and get past this shit so that the meets can continue and the Growing. community can do yeah. its thing. But as it stands now, we've weakened that force by dividing people because now some people aren't going to work you yeah. know, at me to come do meets with you and vice versa. Some people are going to do meets over yeah. there and stuff. But, you so, know, and, and I've, I've heard some of that through the grapevine as well. Like, yeah, the, the, um, they're, you know, they're going to pull stage four from competing at our events and stuff like that. And, um, and it's, it's, like, it's, you know, I mean, that's their choice that they, if they want to do that, you know, like in the right. end. Um, but I mean, really for us, it's just like we, our, our priority is just to keep, keep the momentum and the sport growing from what we've been doing. And mm -hmm. that's why um, once USPA got to that point where we, we made that decision to, to leave, yeah, you know, and so after the King of the North, we're actually um, July, our, our first meet will be under the XPC. So, I mean, and, that, and that's our, what our priority was. And it's like, I obviously don't want the, you know, the state to be here, you know, be split or put into camps and yeah, stuff like right. that, obviously. And or I, then we have two different yeah. federations competing for the yeah. competitors in the audience here too mm -hmm. now too, you know? Yeah. And I mean, I mean, I don't know if anybody from WRPF is planning on trying to come up this way or not. I know Minnesota went WRPF cause I, I mm. met with, uh, it, me. Um, it sounds like they're getting ready to Iowa, yeah. Minnesota, uh, Minnesota, Iowa, South Dakota, um, and Nebraska and then Missouri and Illinois. I, I met with all those uh, meat directors and we kind of all made this decision at the same time that we were going to be leaving USPA. So um, I, I went a different direction. I went with W or not WRPF, but with uh, XPC just because of um, I, I've been doing the Arnold events here probably the last four years now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and it's one of those opportunities I'd like to really offer to a lot of our local lifters is that, you know, hey, our local meet here is now an Arnold qualifier. Yeah. So, yeah. so and, and it didn't have anything to do with, you know, I mean, WRPF, I mean, it's. Wasn't, it, wasn't USPA a uh, Arnold qualifier too? No, no. They didn't people get invited from the USPA to, to the Arnold? Not necessarily. Oh, okay. um, you had to get like a crazy totals to gotcha. go into it. Okay. Whereas now, um, if you could just showing up and competing at our events, you can actually, you know, you get like that free invite. That's yeah, pretty cool. So. That'd be a really sick experience from mm -hmm. like, yeah, just to go in and be a part of that big, big, big show for mm -hmm. powerlifting. And I've, I've not been to an Arnold yet. We oh. should go but, Yeah. Uh, I know that the, the people say that they were bigger than, um, the Olympia. Olympia. It yeah. is. The expo is way bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, too, is there's just so much going on, too. It's like, you know, I mean, um, you know, besides all the bodybuilding, the strongman, the yeah. island games. <laughs> Slap competition. Yes. Yeah, yes, I heard that. Yeah, that's crazy. We got to um, get one of those bobbing in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I'll, I'll officiate. I'm getting good. Yeah, I'm learning. I'll catch people. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, but actually, you know, with the XPC, I'm actually competing at the Arnold here in a couple weeks. Okay. That's awesome. This will probably be my last competition, like competing, competing wise. Otherwise, we'll just be focusing on putting on the competitions and stuff like that. So, okay, that's awesome. So, so, so this will be your you got time competing. Big? This will be my fourth time fourth? competing at the Arnold. Okay. Yeah. Are you so. gonna do something crazy? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be watching. Look. <laughs> so, yeah, if you get a chance, you should come to the Arnold. Yeah, I, I really got to check it out for sure. Um, there's four four lifters from North Dakota competing this year. Is there? What yeah. day is it? Um, March 2nd through the 5th. And North Dakota, we compete on Friday, and then we have one on Saturday. Okay. So. We'll have to check that out. Yeah. If John gets the days off, I'll get out there. <laughs> <laughs> See if we can make that happen. So. Um, I did have a, a question. So I was wondering, and, and I, I don't know if I'm misreading what had happened, mm. but from their perspective, from hearing what they had said, they're not really welcome back to your meets, uh, them as individuals to come spectate or judge or, uh, I mean, coach their yeah, athletes. Yeah, correct. I, I, they all went, when, when they came down and they made their decision and they, and the thing was, is it wasn't necessarily their post, what they did. It was what followed afterwards. Yeah. The, the messages and the comments that I was getting and the things I was being called and the fact I'm like, I don't have time for this. I'm volunteering to put my, put these events on. I, I don't need this. And so that's when I was just like, that's when we decided, and I let the, our staff know and the um, venue know in Dickinson that it's like, well, no, 
with the way things are going, Tristan and Joe are not going to be allowed at the competition. Okay. So I just wanted to make that clear, just because. Yeah, cause and, it, it, and it was one of those things where it's like, I mean, if, if they just would have went set, went our own separate ways, you know, as yeah. is. But once it got into the point of, you know, being tagged in posts and stories, I'm like, okay, I'm done with this. I don't have time for this. I'm already trying to deal with all the stuff that was going on with USPA. That right. you know, as my volunteer position as it is, so it's like. Yeah. I, you know, and I, and I got, you know, a wife and kids and you got our stuff going. I'm like, I, I don't have time for this, you know, so. And you've got a meet that you have to <laughs> rearrange. <laughs> exactly. So in, in the middle of, you know, switching federations and then trying to train for my, my competition myself. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I don't need the extra stress. I don't need the extra headache. You know, if, if they, if they want to, you know, you know, talk, you know, I'm all up for that, but it's just one of those things where, like, you know, the the posts and being tagged and this and that mm-hmm. after the fact kind of stuff. Yeah, which it seems like, and I'm not shooting shade at them or anything, but it's just kind of how the world is now. That's how that's where it's <laughs> yeah. going. Is. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I I do, do. I think though too that there's a um, there's a really important value in everyone acknowledging what they did wrong in this situation because it's so fucking minute. It's really yeah. not that serious it's of not. an issue at all. Um, and then just being able to say, look, for the sake of all of us being good at what we do, them being good supporters and, and sponsors, you putting on good shows and um, unique shows at that, mm-hmm. that everyone should want to be a part of and should be able to be a part of and, and whatnot. I think at the end of the day, my end goal is we find out, is there is there any way to reconcile and see you guys put your heads back together and put on events? Um, or is this just 100% fuck them? You know, and, and, and whatever and, you, know, you I, want. I, I, I would be open to that. I mean, obviously, I mean, I've known Joe for a number of years. I've yeah. even competed with Joe in competitions. Like, I mean, um, I remember going all the way out to Williston in like 2018, and there was only like maybe 20 of us competing in these competitions at the time. And yeah. then this was in like full circle, which is, you know, if you've yeah, been yeah. to full circle, you yeah. know, what, and this is before they moved how small of a gym that was. So, I mean, we were crammed in these little corners and competing and stuff. So, I mean, there's obviously history between us mm-hmm. and, you know, you know, just want, you know, not wanted to just throw stuff away like that. But, um, like, like I said, it, it just turned into the things where, you know, stuff that was said after the fact, being yeah. tagged and stuff and all this kind of stuff where it's kind of come down to things like, well, if you're planning on bringing up another one, uh, bringing another federation, I'm like, no, that's, you, you kind of drew the line then. Yeah. So that that's kind of where I'm standing. If, yeah. that's, if, if that's the case. I don't know I don't, if it's them know. bringing a federation. I think they're just supporting that federation in the in the chaos of what's going on right now. Yeah, which, um, you yeah, know what I mean? I don't, I don't think they have anything to do with bringing another federation, mm-hmm. but I think they said someone is, is talking about bringing the WRPF mm-hmm. here or whatnot. But in the meantime, this is the route that they're having to go or whatever. So, again, it, I just feel like, Maybe there's an opportunity to dead this. Maybe there's not. I don't know. But I know Joe said he's down to sit down and have a face to face on the show with you where you guys can really hash it out and figure out because I think they feel a certain way, man. I, I got to admit, you're like I said, you're you're coming in here way chill and comfortable with the conversation. Um, he seems to be a lot more heated than you are. Um, he, he's he, they seem really offended by some of the things that they believe took place. I think, I think, you know, whether it be misunderstanding or whether it be ego, cause that fucking exists here in all of us too. Um, one way or the other, there's a misunderstanding in terms of, um, who did what to who and why. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and I just feel like <clears throat> if we got you a, hey, obviously, man, I'm not even going to bullshit. That'd be dope for me and Dion to be able mm-hmm. to be a part of that and get that on our show. But in the same breath, it, it gives you guys an opportunity to talk face to face and say, no, nah, this is how i took that. And this is how this went down. And then you did that first. Yeah. It worst case scenario, everyone else gets to watch this and, <laughs> and choose for themselves though. Like, yeah, yeah. you know what? Yeah, exactly. I, here's who I think is telling the truth or here's where I think, yeah. you know, the, the support should lie. Or they say, you know what? Both these motherfuckers are just being arrogant, big headed <laughs> motherfuckers. And I'm just going to support everybody and say, fucking yeah. let them have their own beef. Yeah. At, at which point that's probably fine too. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But this divide that seems to be happening within the community, that kind of sucks because, and I think a lot of people would voice that because mm-hmm. some people got in support of me saying, man, I wonder if I should try to get these guys on the podcast. And, and like, I reached out to Nick Duraney, who I know is mutually torn right now. Oh, um, yeah, his girls yeah, yeah. is, is um, works yeah, with the, yeah. the, the Luplos. Um, mm-hmm. And so like, they're they're decent from that advantage point she's like i gotta support them mm-hmm. 
even though she knows that Nick and you are hella cool, she's cool with you, I'm sure. So there's this, you know, there's this mutuality between everyone, which right now people are torn. I think some people would just like to be able to see the whole story. Because right now all we have is social media, bro. Like right now, like you've cleared up a lot of shit. They cleared up a lot of shit. Where before I was just like trying to keep up with what was going on in everyone's streams. The other part of it too is the fact is like, honestly, after... It was all said and done, you know, that evening with like, okay, we're not, we're just not going to be involved with each other anymore. That was it on our end. Right. I, I never, we didn't make social media posts. We weren't making stories and tagging stage four, you know, and, yeah. and that's, and that, that's kind of what they were doing. And it got to the point where I'm just like, well, I don't have time for this. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but I'm going to just block you. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I haven't went to people within the lifting community and trying to sway them one way or the other. Right, um, right, right. And which I, is the same thing they they stand, but they say that they they stand by the fact that they've not tried to convince anyone I any got other way. Evidence otherwise, and see now he has evidence too. This is why yeah. I think you guys need to have a conversation. I honestly, I think I think you guys would get face to face and be like, "This is fucking stupid, man." I think from since, where I stand, because I've heard both yeah, versions from now. hearing hearing both sides, and I I did try to keep up with it as much as possible because mm. I do watch Gubu. I think it's. Good I think he he's gold, man. That guy's uh, he's found his niche. Yeah, yeah. he definitely did. <laughs> uh, and he's gained a lot of support over just like one year. Oh, yeah. But um, like with hearing your story or hearing your side of the story and hearing Joe's and, and Tristan's and it it's um it's it makes a lot more sense. And hearing them both, I'm like, okay, I can X some things out as to what y- yeah. what really happened. And even if you guys didn't meet up, which obviously it would it would help everybody. Mm. It would help you guys immensely. I mean, there's no reason to have any, and I'm not saying you do, but any ill will or any, any, anything in between you guys when it could be just dead. And, it, and, and, and honestly, like with, with us, that's that's kind of what it is. We've, I mean, my wife and I have decided. You know, we we moved on. We don't have time for you know to yeah. play these kinds of games. Um, yeah. You know, we got enough stuff going on. In our, just regular life instead of our, you know, volunteering to keep the support, you know, going and doing what we're doing. Mm-hmm. So, and it's just one of those things where, I mean, yeah, I, I, we'll I, see I, how it goes, man. Honestly, I, I think you're, you're better off watching the, 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 the whole, the whole modcast mm-hmm. so that you can get their version. You can see them and they get the opportunity to see you. Because that could change everything. You might say yeah now and then you watch and be like, you know what? Fuck that. I don't want to do this. Well, or him too. He might watch yours and be like, yeah, fuck that. I don't want to have a sit down. He can well, fuck the, off. The, I mean, the messages and stuff that they initially sent to me was the, fa- you know, and it was just, you know, attacking how I handled the situation with North Dakota stuff. And it was how I wasn't being transparent. And I'm like, well, what more do you want? I made a video literally describing what we're doing here locally. You know, we're working with the gyms, getting lists together. Um, the one ref, one of our referees is stepping down. I mean, I, I've been more available than, I mean, pretty much almost every meet director in the country. Like, I mean, if, if you've seen our social media page, I mean, we're posting stuff on there all the time. Mm-hmm, if someone yeah. messaged me a question, I'm like, boom, I can, you know, shoot them a message back. But, you know, and then they were asking, they're like, well, well, we need to see receipts and screenshots. And I'm like, I don't have anything to you know, this guy's got some military stuff going on. I don't, you know, and if I didn't know, he would, if he didn't tell me, I wouldn't have known. Right. Cause it's military. It's not like he's going to a, you know, you know, a county courthouse or something. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and to be fair to, to what you're saying right there, too, um, there, there's, there was some discussion that happened on the podcast with Joe, um, that as a direct result of what you're saying, he's asked me not to put on too, because the person you're speaking of asked mm-hmm. him, Hey, could you not, can you remove the part where you talk about me and my name? Because it's an ongoing situation mm-hmm. that I don't, I don't want aired out in public. And exactly. And so, and, and so that, now he understands that is what I mean. You know what I mean? And so, so like maybe there's, that's where you start finding common gets, ground though. You know what I mean? I mean if that, when if, people were heated, they get fucking really over the because, top. Yeah. I, yeah. That was the big thing. Was there, I was being pressed. They're like, we need more info. We need right, more. And I'm right. like. I don't know what to tell you um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. other than what, well, you know, what he stepped down and that's all I, I, I know. Yeah. I mean, I don't have the, the details on all of what's going on. In reality, him. if, if, if a judge wanted to step down, they don't have to tell you other than they step down. That's like, if I quit, yeah, I just yeah. I quit. Why'd you leave, Dean? Yeah, you leave? I, I quit. That's yeah, why. give us the reason, <laughs> yeah. bro. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that was the thing is, that, you know, he he, you know, he came up and he's like, "Hey, I got some stuff going on." You know, once it's all you know situated, we'll go from there. And I'm like, yeah. it "Works for me." Mm-hmm. And 
literally now just like then when people are pressing for what they wanted more info i'm like i don't know what to give you i don't know what to tell you but so is there anything else that that you feel like you would like to say i guess today um you know i i guess you know i've had a lot of people in the community asking like why we didn't go wrpf right well uh, I talked with like a lot of meat directors as this whole thing was going on with USPA. And one of them was JP Price. And he's been in the game for uh, years as a lifter and putting on meats and stuff like that. And um, there's just not a lot of structure. Like, I don't think people realize as much as they do the lack of structure with WRPF. It's very new to the United States. Um, right. A lot of people don't know that it's actually a Russian federation. Is it just an American branch? Mm-hmm. So one of those things where I'm like, well, how much of your membership goes back to Russia then? Right. Yeah. You yeah. Know, so. Yeah, I stand behind that 100. percent And yeah, so and then like I mentioned that to a few lifters, and they're like, "What?" I'm like, "Oh, well, just telling you." But so we and we we just want to be put on meets like we have been. We don't want to be involved in social media circuses. Right. And. You know, that's why we were looking at like APF or XPC because they both seem to just, you know, do their own thing. They're not, they're not very involved on social media, really. So. Cool. That's good. Yeah. Well, I hope to see that you continue to put on these meets that you've been that's, putting on and, and they <laughs> yeah, keep yeah. growing, you know. You know, and, and we got like, you know, since we're switching federations, um, uh, the first meet is our XPC, which is the, it's the Massonomics Classic mm-hmm. that we're doing down in Aberdeen with those guys. And, Honestly, when we switched over federations and let the lifters know, hey, this is what we're doing. Oh, there was so much sign of relief. Like, I, I we have Dan, Dan Bell, who's like, you know, the power lifter, the guy, with the, you know, the mm-hmm. total to get. That's yeah. the guy who reached out. And he's just like, love it. Thank you for doing what you guys are doing. He's been super supportive yeah. of everything during it because, you know, they're kind of following like, hey, are we going to have a meet? What's going to happen? Yeah, 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 yeah. And stuff like that. So it was really cool to get, you know, people's, you know, support at that level. That we're like, okay, I like I like what you're doing because you're going a different direction than what everyone else is doing because you want you don't want to be involved in it. Yeah. At the end of the day, we just want to put on meets. Yeah, and have, I mean, and have fun. As an individual who does a recreational sport or hobby that you pay to do, all you want to do is compete. You know, yeah, exactly. uh, I guess. the less distractions, <laughs> yeah. the better. Too. Yeah, yeah. You're not mm-hmm. looking to uh, uh, worry about what federation or or what you just mm-hmm. want to compete. Like as uh, myself, at least. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. and, and, that, and that was really the the gist of. I mean, what we've you know feedback we've gotten from people too, because before USPA was up here, mm-hmm. it was APF, and and, yep. and, mm-hmm. and those people you know did both federations or went back and forth, and it was like. At the end of the day, no one cared what was behind the platform, as long yeah. as the meat was put on well and everyone had fun. And, exactly. You know, and, that, and that's and what that's where we're about. Yeah. So, well, dope, man. I really appreciate you coming on and giving your side of the story. At the very least, yeah. um, I hope if if nothing else comes of it, and if we don't get a third sit down after you guys mm-hmm. get a chance to watch what we uh, put together, um, at the very least, that that people get an opportunity to see both sides of it and realize it's not a as big of a wildfire as it, as it appears on social media. Yeah. Um, I think the tensions have calmed down. It's been about a month now. So the tensions have really died out. Um, hopefully the, the divide ain't even really that strong anymore. And if there's anybody who's, you know, on the fence about where they stand, I think being able to watch this, hear it from the horse's mouth on both sides of the story, get to make their own conclusion. And then at which point get to decide, like mm. it doesn't have to be an all or nothing thing. Oh, you, exactly. you can just say, Hey, you know what? Yeah, I still support both and I'll still be around where both are, whatever the situation may be, because I think that's where I stand. If I was to tell the truth, man, like I, I like them. Um, I, they, they had a lot of uh, good points that they made about um, in regards to their passion for this industry. I, I can see why they got so worked up and sure. they seem very, very passionate about it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that they were right, mm-hmm. but they still got worked up. They still got passionate about it. They still had a feeling about something and they stood their ground on that. And you did the same fucking thing. So I respect both sides of it. I just yeah. don't think it's as serious as the community was starting to to see it and get involved with it. So hopefully this helps dead some of that and uh, we can just move forward and keep putting on dope ass shows. So mm-hmm. that's, I totally agree. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're back. Uh, Dave Stensland. That was um, a lot more chill. Uh, yeah. interview than Joe's. Like I said, Joe, Joe's heated, Joe's passion. You could tell, um, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with um, Bedros. 
Um, he, he's this guy. He does the MDK project or whatever. Mm-mm. It's like this mastermind for men being men. You know, oh, okay. like really cool shit. It's hardcore, bro. It's it's like another level. It's not like Andrew Tate or nothing like it's that. It's kind of s- s- not mindset stuff, <laughs> yes, but not like super... Um, I hate misogynist. Yeah, <laughs> not super. No, not at all. It's very different than that. Yeah. So yeah, I won't even say it's. It's not like like Andrew Tate shit. But it's like that. I get what you're saying. Though. Um, it, but it's 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 real stuff. This guy, Bedros bases um his projects on um outwitting the devil. It's a book that I've been reading heavily called um, Outwitting the Devil. Yeah, it's it's basically Napoleon Hill who wrote um um uh, Think and Grow Rich. Okay. So he basically wrote this book where he's doing an interview with the devil and he's talking about um, good versus evil, essentially, and how we live in today's world and how the the world is designed a certain way based on drifting and non drifting. And and it's a whole different. um, Sounds like a cool book. It's it's insane, bro. I recommend it to anybody. Anyways, this is what he kind of bases a lot of his stuff on. Um, So I was intrigued by him already. I think uh, Sweeney was the one who introduced me to him. But I saw that Joe actually um, did the MDK project, which is basically like a, a, a three day version of buds for mm-hmm. Navy SEALs. Okay. So you go on, you test your grit mentality, your heart, your, your strength, your, you know, everything, bro. Like, and he did this recently. And I think it's like a $12,000 program you do for like four days, but now he's part of this elite group of men and he gets to meet with these guys regularly and do all right. this shit. So, um, Joe's a bad dude. I'll, I'll just put that out there. He's, he's no bullshit. Um, He's he means what he says, and um, I, I believe he can back up the shit that he talks and, and and whatnot. Not to say that if this was a physical altercation, I'm not standing on his side in any way. I'm just saying what I seen of him recently after all this has happened, him doing this MDK project. Mm-hmm. I I got a lot of respect for the guy, man. He's he's hardcore as fuck. Yeah, I wanna I wanna <clears throat> preface or end this by saying like I I had never talked to stage four or either likewise either of them. Uh, I don't know too much about them other than their company. I've seen them at the powerlifting events and yeah. I mean it's always been good and obviously they support really well. Um and Dave I've only talked to a handful of times, so uh, I mean, we really don't have a dog in this fight, so yeah, not at all. It's, it's other than we want to see our. It, it legitimately, grow. it's it's none of our business. I guess you could say. Yeah. In, on one hand, on the other, because we have a podcast, we thought it would be a good idea to try to mediate the, some of the situation and kill some of the divide that's happening yeah. amongst the local athletes just here in Fargo yeah, alone. The that community we wants yeah, to the know. community. Um, so hopefully, we can put this on a platform for people to hear both sides without too much of our own opinion in it, mm-hmm. and just let you guys hear the the two talk. Yeah. you know. Um, straight to you essentially but, so but yeah. that's kind of what you got here so yeah. make make of it what you will um hopefully we can get a third episode done where we get them face to face and have a conversation if mm-hmm. that doesn't happen this would be the last you'll hear of it um it's been over a month since this since this all went down yeah and i i, I don't know if i'd say the smoke is cleared but um i it's not as um heightened as it was you know a few weeks ago now um there might still be somewhat of a divide here and i think these interviews will help people kind of Make a better judgment. Yeah, I mean, when we have that, yeah. I would work with both of them. Is what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah, I'm not in any position where I'm like, man, <laughs> he's right, he's wrong. I think they both um, were passionate. They both got heated about the situation. Um, maybe both of them have some rights and wrongs mm-hmm. um, within it. I'm not going to pick and choose what which was. I think um, I, I believe in both of their um, direction and, and their belief system about what went down enough to say you know what i i, I stand impartial and I, I would definitely work with either of the two guys yeah going forward i mean we'll see the kind of divide that is at the next powerlifting yeah meet. that's where it will show i guess huh? yeah but hey fair. you know what if everyone shows up to the same powerlifting meet then there's not much of a divide, no divide they cannot yeah. talk to each other that's fine people are allowed to not like each other and still attend and, and have peaceful yeah, events and, and not problems. have drama and yeah. i think that'll be fine and there's a lot more to the story but we'll let you guys hear it from the actual interviews themselves instead of us kind of repeating everything yeah. again so yeah. um short and sweet on our part but the interviews are both about an hour apiece so mm-hmm. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys got something good from this and you were able to kind of discern for yourself what really went down with this whole situation. Um, like I said, we got it from the horse's mouth so that we could put it out for everybody to um, catch a glimpse of. Mm-hmm. Make sure to uh, like, share, uh, talk shit about us. 
tell your friends, do whatever. Uh, comment down below any questions or comments if you'd like. Honestly, I guess it could be nice, could be mean, probably not mean. No, you might get restricted on YouTube. <laughs> uh, not from us, just YouTube. <laughs> we want you to talk your yeah. shit. DM <laughs> us, whatever you got to do to get yeah. it out. <laughs> All right, that's all we got for you guys today, though. Um, hopefully that was a good episode. I hope it wasn't too long. Um, and I appreciate every single one of you that takes the time to check us out. So we are out.